and welcome to the Vanu Podcast, a podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. It's a uh, snowy and icy morning here at uh, the Free Republic, uh, but we're getting closer and closer to the warm spring weather, uh, which means we're also getting close to our first event here uh, at Pasnia. The official dates for our spring camping weekend are March 31st to April 4th. Uh, again, March 31st to April 4th. Uh, we've also released the dates for uh, Vanu Fest 3, uh, our now annual week-long gathering of liberation here at our nature sanctuary, uh, the Church of Self-Liberation. Uh, Vanu Fest 3 is from September 26th uh, to October 3rd. Of course, for any event here at, at uh, Veritas, individuals must be vetted. Uh, that is, we have to know you personally or find someone we both know uh, who will vouch for your reputation. Uh, you can email me, shane at liber uh, libertyandattack.com, uh, or find uh, our Pasnia Committee of Correspondence chat group on Telegram uh, if you need help getting vetted. Uh, and also just mention on the uh, Pasnia website, pasnia.com, uh, you can just click the Vanufest tab uh, for uh, you know full details and if you need, uh, need to return... Uh, Return for the dates for the events. But uh, yeah, on today's episode, you'll catch my recent guest appearance on uh, Team Rabbit Hole, a podcast hosted by Jim and uh, Raphael. I uh, came across them a couple months ago and uh, have really appreciated many of their guests and uh, the discussions they have and uh, was, was certainly appreciative to have the opportunity to record with them uh, this past uh, Wednesday uh, live on Odyssey, actually. It's my first time doing a live stream on Odyssey. But uh, yeah, we covered a lot. Um, mainly, though, we discussed items pertinent to my path to where I am today, uh, building the Free Republic of Pasnia. Uh, this was really the first time I've had the chance to go from uh, the very beginning of my journey, uh, starting with Bill Cooper and conspiracy, uh, all the way up to now with the spiritual uh, mental liberation integrations. Uh, of note, there was a conversation herein that I really wasn't expecting to have. Uh, one on Austrian economics and its ability to be used as controlled opposition. And uh, being in Austria, Raphael brought uh, forth some of his own personal experiences. Uh, I guess he spent uh, six months or so studying uh, the subject at a school uh, that Mises himself uh, apparently did. And uh, mentioned some interesting Ludwig von Mises Institute ties uh, with Loyola, uh, Lo uh, Loyola University, a uh, major Jesuit institution. Uh, we really don't come to any conclusions, and theoretically, philosophically, all is well with free market economics. Uh, just stuff that is worth being aware of is all. Uh, and if you're tuning into this podcast, the solutions are more important anyway. But uh, I think I'll leave the introduction there for now. Uh, I do hope you enjoy this discussion over on Team Rabbit Hole. Uh, this coming Monday, I'll be having Raphael here on Vanu, uh, so you'll, you'll hear much more from him uh, in the near future. Uh, but with that said, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, always remember, Vanu is yours for the making, and the second realm is yours for the building. Cheers. A bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hmm? You could say that. I can see it in your eyes. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. Okay. Welcome to Team Rabbit Hole Edition 269 with Rayo. It is Paznia, hailing from the Free Republic of Paznia. Join the team as we explore peace, autonomy, and self-liberation, and most likely astrology and human design, and all the other rabbit holes we'll find with Rayo. Welcome and well met. How's it going, dude? Hey guys, thanks a lot uh, for yeah. Thanks a lot for uh, you know the chat. I, I I certainly appreciate it. I I'm actually a listener to your came, came across your guys's podcast. I guess it was a couple months ago um, through Andreas. He's one of those. He's one of those folks. I listen to a lot of podcasts, but I also search for like I try to follow everything that like he does and like Ari Oslin and I, I go I go down a lot of rabbit holes myself. Um, but uh, yeah, Team, I, I, I appreciate uh, you know, what you guys are doing and the conversation you're having. Uh, so yeah, it's it's good to be here. Good to good to. You know, uh, get a get a you know get a face to the, the I guess the the voice per se. That's what's up. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on. You're totally team, obviously. If you're into Andreas Exertus is his kind of handle name. Um, his his Christian name is Andreas, but uh, yeah, Exertus is into flat Earth. He he's actually got a I think Vice, like the network from 
it's kind of kind of hipster MTV news kind of thing. They're they're doing a special on that he did. I think dropping in March, the Ides of March, um, March fifteenth. So he's got really cool output. People should check him out if they haven't. He, and the conversations we've had on here are always interesting. He's one of the most colorful people I know. So I'm glad you know about him. Um, so yeah, anyway, and also oh, well, just before you continue, you know, that's always what I'm wondering or I'm doing and wondering about is, you know, who actually is really looking into stuff, you know, like who is actually opening the links, who is actually, you know, tracing people to really find out, you know, the connecting threads. So props to you for doing that. <laughs> Yeah, and the last episode, I mean, there was things Andreas was telling us that I had no clue about, like his whole South American kind of running away from coups and stuff. Nutty, nutty stuff. I digress. So this is episode 269, and that reduces mm -hmm. neurologically down to eight. So the eight is the strength card. Trust yourself. Let your inner endurance shine. Use your power to embrace the amazing person within. You have everything within you to succeed. Raphael, what card do you have? Nice. So this is the six of sword, uh, six of wands. It is the Lord of Victory. We have victory, advancement, acclaim, obstacles swept aside, the first necessary victories of the pure fool. Oh, I think I never even read that one. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So Jim? six of wands. Uh, I mean, immediately, I don't know if you're into tarot much, but it's like uh, it's a victory card. But it's like it's saying it's kind of in the middle of it. It's not like full on victory. So. I was getting in my mind um, the final countdown with Job from Arrested Development kind of vibes. <laughs> it's like, yes, I'm a victor. and uh, But it's not like quite like um, the end of Lord of the Rings by any chance. It, you know, it's not that extreme of a victory. But um, I'm kind of curious, Rao, uh, what you're vibing with synchronistically between the strength card and that six of wands. Um, I guess the the what comes to mind for me is um you know a lot a lot of folks over the past couple of years that you know things have gone bad for them but like since 2020 like uh you know things have come together um a lot for me and for a lot of people that i that, you know that i that i associate with and you know this this uh you know this parallel network that we're that we're building um so i guess uh you know like we, we've made great progress and and, and that's and you know I've, I've seen a lot of um a lot of you know personal personal stuff uh, myself uh, obviously yeah, it's it's ju just getting started and uh, I guess that's why I take away from it is, you know, like there's, it's, we, we've already won, but we're, we're you know, it's, it's just the beginning. Uh, we've talked about it, I think, or I was talking to the, I'm um, going down to Costa Rica for three months. And the person who's housing me has actually been on the podcast slightly mm -hmm. with other people um, back in 2020. Um, Chilagua, I think was the episode because he was going to run a hostel, but now it's not. And anyway, um, and I was talking to him, and it feels a little like he's he's talking about actually, Raphael. I got to talk to you about this. I said let's talk, but I haven't, and I got to be careful because there's going to be NDAs and stuff like that. But disruptive technology and next level shit, um, it's coming around the corner, and people like all of us are are how would I put it? Uh, it's like what I was talking with Rick about was um, in the Civil War, American Civil War. Uh, the war ended at one point, but because of technological information kind of communication lag. Uh, much like this episode a little because um, there's a little lag uh, between our feeds. Don't fret. Um, I'm just making sure Raphael is aware of it. Uh, it's not his fault. It's just kind of tech. Anyway, um, in the um, Civil War, people, you know, over in Texas and whatever, those kinds of areas got the news of the victory of the North way later. So there were still some skirmishes. And it kind of feels like that's what's going on in the collective where um, the battles won, but we're kind of having to mop up little skirmishes and little, little kind of... Uh, things on the side at the end here but i think most people are starting to wake up to the fact that you know big brother isn't their best friend probably and maybe money isn't what they thought it was currency value wise and all these kinds of little rabbit holes we don't have to digress into it too much but um yeah the strength card is is a kind of victory in that card it shows a woman kind of the higher self the the higher chakras holding um, power and control over the animalistic kind of lower nature of self. And I think that's a large part of what leads to the victory of mm -hmm. six of wands is like, Hey, you could be full of passion and that can kind of get you in trouble sometimes kind of like in uh, Pinocchio. Um, I've been listening to some Jordan Peterson classes, which are fascinating, but he goes into the, like six hours of Pinocchio analysis, which is like a Jungian analysis of Pinocchio, which is crazy. Highly recommend it. Uh, we'll put the link in this episode at some point. I'm not a hardcore Jordan Peterson fan, but I'm like, this shit's, dope and people should scope it um in any event the uh 
the passions can take over just like in um, Donkey Island or whatever. Like it's like the carnival where the kids are kind of doing whatever the fuck they want. And there's a beauty to being a trickster, the fool, like Raphael was saying, the fool. But once the fool kind of masters himself, that's when you can really do magic in a very different way. Um, so I'm I'm rambling. My bad. Uh, I, I guess Mercury is an Aquarius now. So, but um, yeah, anything you guys want to talk about those cards, feel free, and we'll kind of go from there. <laughs> I'd say spot on analysis. Uh, I, I would say we just get right into it. So usually, you know, Jim is this a little is, choppy, this, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know if it's only choppy or if there's delay. It seems to me more like there's delay. To but, me, there's uh, a delay, but yeah. we roll with it. The restream uh, server is, you know, streaming us, intertwining us like this. Anyway, Jim, this is usually where the barrage of questions starts about, you know, origin origin story. You know. <laughs> yeah. So much like just everyone imagine the uh, the final countdown. Doo -doo -doo. Raul, tell us kind of, and you can be as long or winded or as short winded as you want, um, kind of the origins of how you've gotten to where you are now, where you were raised. Um, I was looking at your chart. It was South Dakota. You can get into that as much as you want or as little as you want. Um, but, you know, what kind of culture were you raised in? When did you start turning on to magic and conspiracies? How have you tapped into the dream um, up until this point kind of thing? Yeah, I guess uh, the the furthest back I'll, I'll really get, I, I, I kind of had a, a normal... Uh, you know, a normal childhood, you know, upper, you know, middle white class, uh, you know, upper, upper white class or upper, upper middle class. And uh, you moved around a lot um, growing up. And um, I guess things really, I, I really, yeah, things kind of changed for me. I got diagnosed with so-called type 1 diabetes at age 16. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd had health problems growing up my entire life. I mean, I, you know, I, I was, uh, um, I, you know, I went through the, you know, the, I, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, childhood sickness from being chronically poisoned by what I call Babylon Pharmaceuticals. Um, so like I got diabetes, then a couple of years later had a grand mal seizure at a metal show, and uh, um, at that point, um, I like I, I sh this, this shouldn't be happening to me. Like I'm pretty young, like I shouldn't be getting sick this this early. So I started making I make, started making some small changes back then, and so. Um, can you tell us sure. a little about a grand mal seizure? Because I've had a few petite mal seizures. I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure. I was also wondering what that is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so so basically, it's like I, I, the the way that I'll explain it is that um, I remember being being conscious, and then two days later, I, I remember waking up in the hospital. Uh, and uh, uh, apparently, like I, I was unconscious, I, I wasn't there. Um, not a not a violent person at all, but apparently, I was fighting the nurses; so they had to restrain me. Um, I was out of my mind, uh, you know, or I guess out of my body, well, I guess out of my body and out of my mind. Um, and uh, I woke up, yeah, two days later. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I kind of felt like a changed person. I'd been kind of selfish up until that point. Um, kind of, uh, I always called myself an asshole for sure. Um, but but after that, like my mom said, kind of, you know, they always bicker. They always bicker growing up. And after the after that seizure, I told my mom, like, I kind of feel like a different person. And when they'd start, they'd fight about like little little shit, and I'd you know try to intervene and be like, this is retort, this is ridiculous. Why are you arguing about this? Um, so I guess that would have been kind of the point. Um, I guess a, a, a turning point, um, per se. And then, yeah, when I was 19, uh, yeah, you know, 19 or so, I watched 9 11 Loose Change on Netflix and, uh, um, then found Bill Cooper a year later, um, and, uh, um, became, I guess the, 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 pro the appropriate word would be, just, um, I, I came across, I first stumbled across his nine hour Porterville presentation on fascist. Team. And, uh, then, uh, I, I found, I saw his, uh, you know, 9-11 prediction that he did on June 28th or like mid June or end of June in 2001 and you know, whoever, whatever they're going to blame on Bin Laden, don't you even believe it? So I was like, who the hell is this guy? So I, I read his book and then I was working at a, at a moving company at the time. So I listened to basically like all 2000 hours of, of his, uh, of his radio show, just, you know, packing people's kitchens, getting my fucking world rocked essentially. Who is this? Uh, so Bill hey, that I'll put in. You said? Bill, Bill Cooper. Um, Milton Cooper, Cooper. Cooper. Okay, okay, I got you. Wow. Real class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. So go I was. Ahead. Yeah, I was. Oh, that's go that's ahead. all good. That's all good. I'm glad we're glad we got that clarified. But um, yeah. So I, I you know, I, I listened to a bunch of him, and uh, then yeah, 2014 came around, and I, you know, I wanted, I, I was looking for, you know, obviously he died in 2001. I was killed by uh, by bludgies by police, and um, you know, like I I'd been looking for like or you know a so called replacement for him you know on the radio that I could you know like I listened to that got into the same sort of subjects and I couldn't really find anybody so I was like all right I guess I'm gonna have to start the start the show myself so um, I first entered the alternative media in February of 2015 uh, with uh, Liberty Attack Radio which is now not radio anymore it's just uh, Liberty Attack Publications a, a book publishing outfit 
But anyway, I started, uh, you know, the radio show back in 2015. It was designed as a replacement for his show. So I was coming at it from, you know, very much like a conspiratorial, um, you know, minarchist constitutionalist perspective. Um, you do have and, Pluto uh, then not and Scorpio. Long after. I'm just going to, uh, you have Pluto <laughs> yeah. and Scorpio in third house natally. I mean, and it's uh, opposite your son and stuff. You are going to be obsessed with conspiracy. Conspir I mean, Terrence McKenna was a Scorpio. I don't know if you're into him and he was very kind of out there. Uh, you're going to be picking up rocks because he was a third house son Scorpio. So you've got the Terrence McKenna mm -hmm. um, intensity about you in terms of picking up rocks and wanting to know all the bugs and bones and, you know, you're not disturbed mm -hmm. by the X Files, so to speak. Uh, go ahead. I just wanted people to know. It's like, no, he's this kid's no joke. Uh, he's been into the rabbit hole longer than we have, Raphael, longer than me. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's okay. I I appreciate that. I could I could listen to you like you you say. I've heard you say on podcasts. You people probably don't listen to you ramble, but I could listen listen to you ramble for hours about astrology and charts and stuff. So, um, anyway, yeah. for for what it's worth, um, but uh, um, so um. Yeah, I, uh, you know, um, Bill Cooper was, was uh, you know, very major. And, uh, so, yeah, started the radio show in 2015. There we go. That's where I was. Um, started the radio show in 2015. And, you know, not long after, probably, you know, Mar May or June, I, I came across, uh, you know, anarchism and, uh, um, you know, some, some other anarchists, kind of the voluntarist perspective. All interaction should be, you know, all interaction should be voluntary is kind of the angle. So I, I, I went for, you know, six months or so, I studied, you know, really in depth Austrian economics and, you uh, um, you know, kind of, you know, came to the conclusion, yeah, free markets are where it's at and, uh, you know, coercion's wrong. So what are we going to do about it? Where's the happy um, compromise? The, the, the state, you know, it's the, <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, yeah. So I, I, so I, so, yeah. <laughs> and maybe example, for people anyone, want things, so like communism doesn't really work. Like people yeah. Maybe for anyone not familiar. And even though I somewhat, let's say attended, but these were more philosophy courses, mainly of an Austrian economics independent Institute in Vienna like 10 years ago so I should be able to explain it but I'm not gonna try now so to anyone who isn't familiar maybe you want to give a very basic rundown of uh, Austrian economics and I guess especially the whole idea of it won't be graded don't worry Hayek versus <laughs> um or Mises versus Jesus, uh, who's who's the other guy um, um of course now oh, I forget Freeman, talking like the Austrian versus Chicago schools yeah, or, or Mises or Austrian school versus who is the one with the central planning, the uh, English oh, guy oh, more, uh, or American? Marx or Keynes. Keynes, Marx Keynes or, you know, Keynes, or maybe just yeah. explain yeah. the most basic thing to anyone who's not familiar, because if even I can readily regurgitate it, you know, it means there'll be plenty who will benefit from this, if you would be so kind. Myself included, yeah. Not to detract you. Well, I'm gonna, don't yeah, worry, and, I don't remember where, I, like 2015. So okay. compare schools of thought and you don't, okay. this isn't like a, you're a cap moon with a Taurus sun and Taurus, Mercury, and Venus. <laughs> so you're not even against doing this. Let's just kind of, yeah, draw a line to the sandbox. And like I said, you don't have to feel like a, an expert, but anything you could say is news to me because this is, Raphael apparently knows a little about it, but I am zilch. So feel free, the conch is yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, I guess the, um, what, so, so I guess what, what people are most common, you know, commonly familiar with today is um, there's, uh, I, I guess, uh, so like the, the Keynesian perspective is, um, I guess, the angle that, uh, you know, centralized authorities, governments um, are the best managers of, you know, of, of the economy uh, and making those sorts of decisions. And since, you know, government, you know, and, and governments are, um, you know, they, they do things by force and coercion. So that's what their, their answer is, is coercion and force, um, you know, centrally planning things, forcing people to do things the way that they think it should be done. Um, the other angle of that is kind of the Austrian perspective, um, or the free market perspective, where um, you, if you leave if you leave humans to the, you know to their devices, you know they're um, you know we aren't we aren't uh, uh, you know I'll talk you know I'll use the wheeze and stuff now, but um, you know like you know like we aren't we aren't violent by nature, right? Like uh, um, you know, uh, a lot of people don't really don't really come across violence in their personal lives that often. Um, you know very, there's you know maybe you know little thefts and things, but generally speaking, you know violence is a major part of people's lives. They don't like the first the first solution to things isn't always isn't usually violence. Um, so the the Austrian perspective is that um, you know leave leave people to you know their devices, um, you know the spontaneous order of the market, and um, you know it'll it'll sort itself out. Is is kind of the the Austrian perspective. Um, laissez faire. You know um, you know leave it leave it leave it be. Um, it's it's kind of the angle there. Non intervention, um, non intervention by by third parties. Um, and then there's, you know, there's further distinctions even, even between that, um, you know, there's kind of the, the Marx, um, the Marx, um, you know, communism angle, which is, I guess, t to me, I don't really see difference. There's 
so there's obviously differences, but I don't really see, you know, the communism and Marx and Keynesian. It's it's all central planning. All it's all uh, authoritarianism, and uh, um, you know these these systems they strip um, they strip people of their choice. You know, their free choice of their you know free will. Um, it's uh, you know it's it's I, I I there's a lot of reasons to to oppose you know these institutions, or um, yeah, lots of lots of reasons. So that's kind of just an, um, a very you know brief overview. Um, it has been like I I studied it up until probably like 2016 when I um, when I dropped out of uh, what I call high level indoctrination college. Um, so it's been a few years. And I don't I was actually I actually pulled you know human action the the big you know Ludwig von Mises' tome like it's it's basically like the Austrian Bible. It's like a thousand pages. And so I read that thing through college, and I, I pulled that out today, and I was like, I could not do that again. Um, mm -hmm. Like I'm not in, like I'm not in the same mindset. Like, we were talking earlier, like I'm, I'm kind of, I'm getting into astrology and spagyrus, and you know, um, um, you know, like, uh, mushroom hunting and things now. Like it's not, um, I'm not really much interested in debating, you know, the the fine points of, uh, you know, marginal utility and and, and all all these economic concepts anymore. But um, but yeah, that's the, the the main distinction I would make is that the, the Austrians, you know, is, is more the free market perspective, non intervention. And then these other systems are um, sent there, you know, the, the centralization control, and that's always done. It's always done by, um, you know, by, by the use of coercion and force and, and outright violence. Um, Maybe so that's kind of the angle like that's, uh, yeah, that's the, the angle. With I, uh, that kind Skeksis of versus versus mystics. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. you're into that. And. Well, I can't reply to what you just said, Jim, maybe to give a, you know, fun little, little personal reference. So I actually went to a school that was supposedly, according to the plaquette in front, built in three years from 1850 to 1853, about that time. And it's simply like a huge, people would have said it's a church or a monastery, but supposedly it was built as a school. So it's one of these, you know, remnant Tartarian buildings potentially, or, you know, whatever. I guess you're familiar with that topic. And there is also a plaquette on top, which mm -hmm. at least um, claims that Ludwig van Mises himself was attending and graduating from that school. And then later on, who is, I guess, su supposedly the founder of Austrian economics or important uh, there. But then what is very interesting to me in terms of all the control research is he supposedly went to Loyola University. Either, sorry, either he went there or there's very important fellows at the Ludwig van Mises Institute in America that are that have very obvious Loyola University ties, which is, of course, the Jesuit University. So this doesn't, you know, say anything in particular, but I was just like, oh, that's kind of interesting, you know, that you have the tie in there, because the big question, of course, is especially if we get into the whole reset stuff, and maybe you want to say a word about this. Um, how much does it even matter? Because even the Austrian economics perspective, though it would be much more uh, voluntary and um, let's say self-driven or whatever, autonomous uh, and not so centrally planned and would have many benefits. But to what degree would this not still be, let's say a fake alternative to the actual reality of, I don't know, abundant resources, for example, you know, mm -hmm. very simply, even just as a mind yes, construct, yes. even though from our perspective, it would already, I would be like, let's take it immediately because it's a lot better. But actually, it's, of course, not the whole thing, just as you yourself described in your journey. And for me, it was actually mm -hmm. similar. So I, I went there for half a year, had some interesting discussions and so on. But then they were even in, in this institute, they weren't even into conspiracy so much and were kind of laughing about it. And I was like, I'm sorry, guys, mm -hmm. but this is, you're too ignorant I have to move on but thanks you know thanks for the cake I'll eat that one and it's a good basis to understand you know the history and economic models um but yeah there's more of course so that's why we're here now <laughs> that's no that's that's a great that's a that's a great point um and and this this coming around and I'll, I'll you know finish off the story at some point um you know i i got back in i got back into the conspiracy stuff in 2020 and um I mean, you, you look at like Ludwig von Mises. Um, I, I don't remember what I don't remember what family, but he was he was funded by like Rothschilds or something. Like his 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 journey over to America was funded by, um, and like Tom Woods has. If you Google it um, or you know search for it, it comes up. Tom Woods wrote a um, he's a big big podcaster. I've, I've listened to him in a long time. I don't really um, he's not he's not someone I'm interested in particularly. But the only the reason I bring him up is he actually wrote an article trying to dispel um, that uh, you know that myth. So like I, I've been thinking about it too. Like um, you know, kind of the anarcho-capital perspective, which is like the most radical, I guess, application of the Austrian, um, you know, Austrian school of thought. 
I mean, it, it's it's so easily could, like it, it's so easily could be used as controlled opposition. Um, like because uh, I know up until like, like even five years ago, I was doing this. I was being dumb and doing this. You know, like justifying some of like fascist book censorship because it's a private corporation, even though it has ties to like the CIA and Inkytel and things. So like the anarcho-capitalist perspective can definitely be exploited. It's not like it's not it's not an it's not an opposition to um, this system at all. Um, it's very much like a, like the individual. Individuals, um, the individuals like like I used to be, I used to call myself an ANCAP. I know a lot of a lot of banks now. They aren't, and they aren't. You know, um, they're fine. You know, like the the theory the theory holds up. I agree with it. You know, philosophically and ethically. But as far as the application, it can definitely be used by, um, you know, used by the first realm by Babylon. Um, yeah, and it's and yeah. I think you're, you're you're right in pointing out that it's it's still kind of um, it's still it's like it's a, it's a consumerist alternative, right? Yeah, there's a lot of shades. I guess it's, it's funny really because like after listening to a bunch of Jordan Peterson, um, and like I said, I'm not like a fanboy beyond a point, um, but uh, he's been taught, I mean, just hearing about uh, social dominance hierarchies and stuff that are just in the gene. I mean, this gets into evolutionary presuppositions and stuff, which may, or may Raphael would scoff at this uh, at some level, I believe. Um, it's like, oh, our star being selves aren't like this, but uh, presumably from a kind of a semi-Darwinian perspective would be we're coming from things that have had <laughs> displays of dominance, aggression, and coercion, and manipulation are kind of in the game, it would seem. So even if one puts forth a uh, philosophy that's very kind of, how would I say it, like more pure or like more of, of like, you know, righteous or something like that, uh, it seems uh, it seems that inherently in our nature at some level, um, there's always going to be people that like want to, that want to, kind of fuck with other people but there's a lot of presuppositions here i'm i'm, I'm obviously listening to this jordan peterson stuff trying to be like well like he only eats meat now and i'm like a vegan so i'm like well is this like straight up like reptilian programming or what's going on here um shout out to the onegs my fiance's an oneg i think Raphael might be maybe that's tmi for the three-letter corporation or to be, a, to be a what an o negative oh yeah, great. Now they're gonna come hunt me. You know, I managed to avoid, you know, the, the, the PCR. I, man I managed to avoid the PCR scraping, which now is officially admitted by the CDC on their website. Apparently, yep. that about ten percent they're just gonna use to sequence your DNA. But don't worry, there's nothing about getting your DNA for anything. You know, I really wonder why they want to have all of that data and what what they at least imagine they can do with it. You know, and what they're actually doing. But yeah, that's just a sideline. Yeah. So oh, thanks okay. for pointing the marker on me like this, you know, but it's okay. <laughs> like I said, sometimes I forget that this people hear this. I, to me, it's almost like a psychotherapeutic couch that we just have people come through on. And then I'm like, oh, wait, this might actually come back to bite me by <laughs> Raphael or anybody. I digress. Um, so yeah, you were talking basically about, I mean, 2020, what was the trigger the election? Or like, what was like, oh shit, I've got to like think differently now because I think gear shifted around 20, uh, 2020 was yeah. the pluto saturn conjunction i was in australia i mean that's when covid popped um all sorts of crazy shit started happening that's when the podcast mm -hmm. kind of became a podcast actually mm -hmm. yeah so so i guess i'll even I'll, I'll back up a little further um so so yeah i started i started OUA radio and uh, you know on anarchism went down that that austrian economics rabbit hole and then just kind of realized that i know we know what the problems are what is what are the so um that's what i've been doing the past you know i guess the past since then is um it's uh, um you know, physical liberation per se um and the past couple of years has been more in the angle of spiritual liberation but but my my history is basically physical liberation looking at um you know ways people can increase their personal freedoms uh personal freedom or make themselves more invulnerable to the coercion of the state um and private individuals who would who would want to violate their autonomy so, um, so, uh, so, so yes, I, uh, I, I started a second podcast in 2017. It's the one I do now, the Vanu podcast. It's, it's based on, um, from the 1960s by the pseudonymous, uh, individual who founded it went by Rayo and people just started calling me that. Um, but, uh, he, uh, he was a very radical, um, rad radical freedom pioneer. Um, he, Initially moved out of his apartment into a van or into a camper mat on a pickup truck. So he pursued van nomadism, lived out of his lived out of his vehicle, and uh, then he, uh, he it wasn't enough freedom for him. So he actually went the he went all the way and him and his teammates uh, went and lived in a uh, in a Paul A10 out in the Siskiyou um, National Forest, Siskiyou region, um, until they until he disappeared. He stopped. Uh, he wrote for a lot of you know like libertarian and and Vanu um, zines in the 60s and 70s, and then he disappeared. 
but uh, he, he he founded this freedom strategy, um, you know, investigating alternative lifestyles. So, so van nomadism, um, intentional communities, um, uh, yeah, perpetual travel, uh, just financial independence. Um, basically, anything that you can do to make you more uh, invulnerable to the coercion is, is the whole premise behind behind the philosophy and the freedom strategy. But uh, um, so yeah, that's what I I I, I um, founded that. I guess just uh, started that in, in 2017. I think it was 2018. Uh, no, so 2017. I'm just curious if you think and, that, uh, that was like a nefarious then, thing yeah, with him getting off, like what, with him falling off grid. Did he just go full retard on the into oh, the no. wild mode, <laughs> or I mean, it's like a good thing. so. Uh, so he wrote, yeah. There's, so there was there was one last known letter, um, and all this stuff. So I've I've been re that's that's how I, I that's kind of the um, where Liberty and Type Publications came from. Is I published my my first book, and I wanted to digitize all this stuff was really hard to find for me. So I wanted to digitize it and make it available because it's really really good. Um, what I call self liberational media it tells people how to be free, like things that they can do. Um, so. Um, he wrote a letter. He was a, he was very much obviously with the lifestyles he chose. He didn't like he didn't like being around people. Um, he didn't like uh, you know he he was very much a, a hermit. And um, in his last letter, he he basically said he he was not going to carry on. You know he wasn't going to uh, maintain libertarian associates anymore. And they disappeared. So it was it seems to be voluntary. It seems to be his choice. Um, and no one really no one knows what happened to him um, to him from from that point on. Um, and uh, I guess the no one really would have known about him probably unless uh, there, there was a guy uh, who named Jim Stum who had been an archivist of all, a lot of the Vaughn and Libertarian zines from the 60s and 70s. And uh, he uh, published a book called Vaughn and the Search for Personal Freedom, um, which is like a collection of his best articles. And that was available on Amazon. That's where I, I, that's where I came across. It was a random stumble on, Am on, on Amazon. And then uh, um, now there's like one copy that's going for like $1,000. Um, one original copy, but there's the the, repo, the repr reprinted run, uh, printed one that we've done. Um, and uh, but yeah, he he just disappeared. Um, I don't think it was ne necessarily a negative thing. Um, but yeah, no one no one knows what, what happened to him. It's like an L. Ron Hubbard, but more kind of um, he went the Sasquatch route <laughs> instead of the space sure. route or something. Um, so uh, cool. I'll have to check this out. And sure. the fact that you've got this publishing situation or have done these books, I'll, we'll have to post the links. I'll be reading this. Like I'm definitely in a mode where it's like. Uh, you know, it's one thing to know the path. It's another thing to walk it. And I've been very conveniently just talking about the path for a long time. And it seems like you've been practicing city. So props to you, sir. Um, so 2020, you were saying, um, I mean, obviously a lot of big shift happened. Yeah. You kind of stopped being not that you were not, uh, you're still conspiratorial, but it seemed like maybe instead of trying to dissect the gears of things, you became more worried about spirit spirituality for lack of better terms go ahead and tell us a little about that transformation mm -hmm. um yeah yeah so so essentially i mean i'd, I'd stop the conspiratorial conspiratorial route um you know i'd, I'd you know, obviously bill cooper was big into talking about the masons and you know all you know all sorts of secret societies and my, my viewpoint was basically like well if the state didn't exist if this apparatus of control didn't exist for them to get their you know to, to exercise their control and so you know to to gain you know gain control of then secret societies would be nothing more than like a you know a boys club but um i don't necessarily think that's the case anymore with my diff with my with what i've been digging into over the past couple of years but um but yeah 2020 happened and the first thing i like i i i came across event 201 and i was like oh shit um this is uh so obviously i was like i i i, I didn't want i didn't want to um but you know like i came across something and i had to pursue it was also like that uh, you know this is now when it really pays off right to know about all that stuff that's <laughs> what i thought <laughs> yeah so and just for the clarity right. 201 but, is yeah. kind of like the extermination yeah. plan of bill gates is, is i didn't well, no, know it was i turned the other way <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah, yeah. Coming up. it was it was a, an ex it was a, pa a pandemic exercise that that was yeah. that looks very that looked very very similar to um, what we're hiring. And I also interviewed a guy named David Crow um, not soon after this this kicked off. He uh, he ran a podcast called The Infectious Myth, and uh, he did a lot of extensive extensive coverage on the SARS CoV one uh, you know fake pandemic. And uh, um, so I, I interviewed him, and we we're gonna do it. We we're gonna put out like an entire. He's gonna basically debunk debunk all you know all these so called you know germ theory things. And um, but unfortunately, he died a few years, a few months after that, um, you know, from really bad cancer. Hmm. Um, so he he was going to carry Mollis, the inventor of the PCR test, died the year before, and there wasn't really a whole lot of people who could you know, very knowledgeably that that had been studying this for that long, that had been paying attention. Um, so yeah, I guess that's that's where I came in in 2020. I was like, fuck, I've I have not been paying attention. Um, like I've been I've been 
doing a lot in the self liberation realm in the direction, but it's like, I have not been paying attention to, you know, what else has been going on. So I felt vulnerable in that way. So the first thing I did, the, the first thing I did was I went back and listened to Cooper's Mystery of Babylon. And I listened to it again and again, too. Um, so a, a few times. And uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, um, so that was that was one thing. And then and then also, too, um, even before the before um, of this entire situation and in, in late 2019, I guess mid to late 2019, I started making some lifestyle changes. Um, I hadn't been taking care of myself. I'd been I, I drank a lot. And uh, I, you know, obviously, and, you know, a standard American diet was not healthy. So I made some some you know, way of eating changes. And, uh, you know, got my mind cleared for the first time. So there was, I, f I felt a lot better. So I was able to handle, handle more things. I had the bandwidth to handle more things. Um, so I, I'd already been looking into kind of the, um, a lot of the, the health sorts of topics. Um, and, uh, was starting, was starting to open my mind more, but I was still in that, in that phase, I guess, um, even, you know, early, early 2020, I was just reading a lot of, you know, like PubMed papers on, on the pancreas and, and trying to like a solution to, you know, to reverse it. But, um, but yeah, I guess, uh, um, I, I, it's, uh, I, I, I just I opened my mind a lot more. And you were so looking was, for a solution to type yeah. one diabetes. Am I understanding correctly? Mm -hmm. And, yep. and I assume you have found it by now. Otherwise <laughs> I can give you a hint. No, well, there's, there's about a dozen, I mean, there's, there's about a dozen, um, a do it's a chronic. I mean, the, the chronic thing is, is, is basically the way that I look at it. Parasites possibly too. Um, that's, that's the newest angle that I'm looking at, looking at, but, um, to, to, to get into this, to, to the spiritual thing, this is why, like I started, I started opening my, opening my mind more and I didn't have the solution. So I wasn't one to like, I wasn't in a position to turn things away, um, without at least them out first. So I came across, you know, Ayurveda, you know, um, you know, Ayurveda, that's, uh, um, thousands of years of, you know, history, a lot of these things. And one of, and there's, there's two causes they list for juvenile diabetes, which is what it's, it's type, it's type one. I call type diabetes where it's, you just poison yourself and then eventually you get to open poisons and yeah, things start to happen. But, um, but yeah, juvenile diabetes, um, they say that it's, it's attributed to past life sins or, um, sins of parents. So like I saw that and I was like, shit. So this is, so I've got to, and I'd already been kind of getting into meditation a little bit too, but like, it was like, okay, like I got, I have to go full bore into this now. So, um, I came across, I came across a uh, triple seven radio and, you know, obviously like it, he interviews a lot of incredible people like, uh, Athen Comente, who was a true sidereal astrologer. So I saw, I started stumbling across these topics and I was opening, I was opening my mind to him, but then they started talking about how tropical, astro tropical astrology was not accurate. And yeah. then there was sidereal, and then yeah, I'd been getting into the Ayurveda, and then there's the Vedic astrology, which I mean, about as many variations in that as there are human beings, um, at least from what I've found out. So like I I I uh, was I didn't really know where to go um, per se. So I I guess I um I, I went with what what felt right to me, and sidereal felt right to me. Like what's actually out there in the stars? Like if I go outside right now and I look up, like what am I going to see? That's what I want. Um, like that's the, that's kind of where, where, where I align, or at least, at least initially align. Um, and then I came across a guy named Phoenix Aurelius, who I just interviewed on, on the Vani podcast, um, mid December. Um, but, uh, he's, uh, he, he does kind of medical astrology, he makes, so it makes, it makes all his own medicines, um, you know, um, really, really high quality potent tinctures and things. And, uh, he, uh, he incorporates, he's been studying it for quite some time. And, uh, like as far as the medical application of it, um, the, the most accurate, the most he's found is true sidereal astrology, which is, um, yeah, again, Athen Comente. Um, and I don't understand all of it. Like, I haven't done the math myself. It's basically that I, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. They point me in the direction of books. And then I read a lot of books. And then I kind of realize I, like, I, I feel like I know less than what I did before I read the book to begin with. So, um, but it's still a fun journey. I, I enjoy it and all. But yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's where I, I, I just really started opening my mind to these things and coming across and then, yeah, it's, it got to, you know, like going back to, to Andreas now, I'm, you know, I'm listening to, uh, you know, kind of off the wall Tartaria stuff that I wouldn't have really thought was important before, but it definitely right. is important. And then, um, and then, yeah, you say I, this yeah, anyway, because right in the green room, right before you came on, uh, Rafael was, I was like, oh, I'm going to be near a volcano in Arenal, Costa Rica, the Arenal volcano, uh, in La Fortuna. Um, and he's like, check out if it's. I guess subterranean cultures spewing forth their whatever. 
it's it's funny to me because it, well, on the one hand, rabbit holes are beautiful to peer down, but if you stare into the abyss, it kind of stares back into you, and you can kind of get spun out on ideas. So just for clarification, I think, I mean, let's put it this way. You're exactly always where you need to be um, in some weird way, and I think Rafa would agree with that in his own kind of ontological perspective. Um, so we could get into varying kinds of astrology later uh, because I want to keep kind of pecking your brain about other stuff, but ultimately I think... Um, it's kind of an interest net situation in a way and where you are and what you're kind of going through energetically is going to lead you towards the instrumentalities that you need. Um, and it's kind of like, I think there was a saying like, um, if you meet the Buddha, you got to kill him kind of thing. I've, I've even very, very recently kind of gone through a situation where I got a reading. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I could look at Sidereal and Vedic and be like, Oh, I, I get how that works or draconic. And there's a few things that are not typical Western astrology charts tropical charts um so i've even myself backed off a little just because of the dilation of my awareness where i'm like uh, all right you know drink from the cup as long as it's filling you but like don't don't just sit there and say this is the only cup and i have to be at this cup and if it's not this cup it's woe is me you know i, I maybe Raphael could speak on that a little um because i know he was probably more i don't know i don't want to say less emphatic now but i feel like you were more zealous about bashar stuff before the covid stuff he started talking and now you're kind of like well this cup has got a kind of weird taste to it now or whatever well it's very um, simple it, it's yeah. always for me in this case and in i guess in particular with this kind of information and supposed frequency level it's a lot about consistency you know mm. and if the consistency starts to obviously break you know and I'm like, I'm sorry, this does not correlate with the core tenants that you've espoused for over 33 years. And that's the basic issue I'm taking, you know. So whatever the causes are, eventually we'll figure it out. I'm not sure how familiar you are with Bashar, Rayo, if, if at all. Not at all. At all. Okay, all right. So that's it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's basically, I mean, highly recommended, especially the old recordings. I can, I can hook you up in some senses. Um, channeled material very high quality in many respects, very interesting and very consistent up to about, let's say, when Trump got elected, more or less, then it started to get skewed. Well, he does live in Hollywood, so it might be yeah. affecting his Who, who knows? Whatever. Who yeah. knows what it is exactly? Um, yeah, really so, good stuff, though. Like, engineer your reality, this is kind of, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not, like, way into it, but Raphael's more into it than me. But that's some of the first conversations we used to have well before a podcast. This podcast basically came out of us having, like, I would be on acid talking to this stranger in Vienna and he'd be like, check out this book, check out channel, like check out this stuff. That's kind of why we're here now because of these conversations. But Bashar was mm -hmm. Raphael's jam for a hot minute. He might be letting off the gas a little these days. I don't know. Um, but no, and just... again, it's, it's not in here again, just to reiterate these basic things also in association with channeling, it is never about the messenger. It is always about the message. So, you know, these th things even today to very much too often get intertwined with each other and it becomes about people and not about ideas anymore in a sense, you know? Um, so yeah, just to clarify, um, but maybe what I'd be interested in Rayo is in terms of the, I'd still kick the... it with Bashar if you wanted to hang out just for the record. Oh, with Bashar, <laughs> like sure. Cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I just want to know whatever yeah. happened in that, or or who knows whatever parallel version of Bashar he's connecting to now. You know, if there's infinite realities, you know, anything is possible, right? Um, just like the Terence McKenna quote you recently posted. Um, how about that? You know, there's never. I'll read it in a second. But my question in the meantime for you, Rayo, would be in terms of this shift from like physical to spiritual liberation. How would you say mm -hmm. for yourself? Yeah. Did you arrive at that conclusion? Because I would say in different ways i've followed a similar path uh, although i more early earlier went full bore on the spiritual um, self-liberation front but what was your reasoning or your process to arrive at that point and why are you now doing that and therefore obviously in my sense see it as quote unquote superior to whatever you've done before i mean superior it's a different thing but you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i i guess really um i I just uh, I, I kind of dropped some some of the arrogance that I that I, I guess I, I, I guess I had and uh, realized that like I, I guess I, I'd already known this like I, I'd, I'd known about this game of you know public indoctrination school you know public schooling I've known about all this stuff it's a lot of this stuff for a while but um, it was really just understanding the scope of the deception that like, 
Like it is Babylon. It's not just like this institution or that institution. Like it is like it's Babylon. Like it's the entire thing. Um, it's it's the foundation is coercion. Like it's that's that's what it is. So um, it was it was basically that that kind of that, the, the recognition of the scope and that I I like I don't know where uh, um, to use the term. I, I came across this other this guy's YouTube channel, uh, Matt from Quantum, Quantum of Conscience, and but he talks about you know like uh, um, like I didn't know where the bookends of reality lied. You know, like I did. I don't know where. Like I, I didn't know where the. You know, where, where. You know, like where, where truth. Sto- like I, I can understand where, where I'm set. What I'm saying. Or, totally. Or getting at. Where's the yellow brick road So basically, going? it was just like I, I was. I'm just trying. I was trying to eliminate. So I basically just I I I, I opened anything, and um I but obviously like there's only so much time. So um instead of going like I kind I definitely was very much kind of the rationalist atheist. You know, up until even like 2018 or 2019 so like at in 2020 i started like if i'd listen to a podcast and it was like someone was talking and i didn't resonate with them like it really didn't matter what they said it was just like if i didn't feel like if it didn't feel right i would just kind of move on and then there's folks like um like ari aslan who talk, gets into some really really wild stuff um but like i resonate with him for like if even if people are wrong um you can you can get you can get you know truth and knowledge from anybody and um, as, as long as people are authentic, you know, like in their search, like that's what I appreciate. Like just the, you know, like, lo- like I guess into like just basically all I need is leads. Like, um, mm-hmm. like that's all like I and then obviously like there's obviously a lot of other v- valuable information that comes too. But like um, <clears throat> so I guess that that'd be the um, a couple of things just um, expanding, expand my perception of reality and what was possible. And um, How second? yeah, I guess uh, you, also, you too, to- like. You can play the fifth if you want. Um, have psychedelics played any part in this awakening process? Some people, like I, I mean, some people don't do any, and some people are like doing ayahuasca every day for years or whatever, uh, which I still haven't done. Somehow, I'll probably fix that in Costa Rica. Um, and you could, like I said, plead the fifth if you want. Uh, we don't want to make you say anything you don't want to say. But um, I know for me, like I, I had some Kundalini awakenings and out of body astral projections back in 2003 when I was a senior in high school. But I was a stoner, and I mean, I've been a stoner most of my life, mushrooms, kind of acid, that kind of stuff. Um, and it actually has helped a lot, but at some levels, I think it has, it's it's a both end. You're expanding your awareness, but then you can get kind of um, addicted to the freedom or the counterculture. Or I don't even know how to explain it, but it, it can get very distracting, kind of like in um, Alejandro Jodorowsky's uh, Olympics bar or something like that, if you've ever seen Holy Mountain. Um, it's like people find their thing, and then they attach to it. I'm just curious if uh, any of your awakening process has been, and it's not wrong if it hasn't, and it's cool if it has. Yay, more evidence on this, you know, the arrowwood.org's fucking library. But um, yeah, have psychedelics played any part in this awakening or or any of your processing? Um, so definitely cannabis. Um, I a couple years ago i finally got a solid solid connection i hadn't i hadn't had one before um so like i had really good flour and really good dabs and i mean I've, i'm a daily you know i, I do my, my first dabbing at 6 a.m usually and i, I smoke i can I, yeah i can see more cannabis um and that's definitely been that's been one thing i, I know for sure like a, there's a book we published um by a, a, a I, I it was a, it's a, it's i guess a, a middle eastern pseudonym but it's called eight faces of the goddess cannabis and the divine feminine and uh um, I didn't, I, I guess I didn't really make the connection, but like it was, I, I guess the, um, the cannabis definitely, um, was, was a big part in, in, in helping to open my mind to some of these things, um, where I, I guess connecting with, connecting with, um, connecting with the feminine, I'd, I'd, I guess I'd been, I'd been very probably if I, if I had to just, if I had to try to put it into words, I was probably imbalanced to the masculine side. Um, and that kind of, that helped bring, bring things back into balance. It helped me to, um, quit, quit drinking, which, um, I That's a big could one. not control myself before, so that was, yeah. that was a major, major thing. Um, Drinking is so a it, turned, it went thing from like uh, I did, re- I did replace, yeah, I, I did replace drinking with smoke with with cannabis, but like there's been progress, um, like I really, I really only, really only, only benefits. Um, and I guess up to a certain point, I'm not serving me anymore, and I'm 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 ready for that. Like I, but I do think like the, the alcohol did serve me at a certain point. I was. Um, you know, I was working what I call a survival job, you know, 40 hours, you know, those, those, you know, grueling, you know, like just getting treated like shit and not feeling, um, you know, not being able to, you know, still not being able to pay the bills and not, not making any money. So like it was grueling and that's what made me able to survive for a number of years was drinking. It served me for a time and then it didn't. And I moved on. 
Um, I hear you. So, alcohol is a good, um, yeah, cannabis definitely played a role. Anesthetizing thing. And uh, Can- cannabis. Sorry, I'm realizing how much the overlap delay is. I'm like, holy shit. Um, sure. Alcohol. I've quit recently. I mean, it's kind of this monkey on my back. Where I don't know about you, um, but I have more of an addictive type personality. I actually have an addiction as a gene key. <laughs> one of my shadows with the gene keys um, with Richard Rudd's gene keys, and it's one of these things where I'm like, it's so programmatic in the system of the culture we live in that I feel like I'm missing out if I don't do it. But in all honesty, I'm so much better not mm-hmm. doing it. It's like, it's, it's people. Do, I, I understand what you mean with the kind of salt mines, the grind where you're like, Holy shit, I'm never gonna get out of this. There's a reason like Jordan Peterson was talking about it. It's like, it's not unreasonable to drink. It actually does anesthetize pain and cause you to kind of forget stress. And, but the problem is it doesn't necessarily solve problems as I guess you understand. And it can create even more problems, especially as a diabetic. I imagine mm-hmm. that was problematic. Um, so yeah, not to interrupt you, but like, it's all it's all progress. I mean, it's that way mm-hmm. we're all walking each other home, Ram Dass style, right? So it's all good. But um, my God, there's some little loops you can get caught in. Um, and it sounds like you understand the power of those loops. Because ultimately, it's almost like this, um, especially because uh, at least in tropical, you have a Capricorn moon in uh, the fifth house. So it's like... <laughs> You've got to, uh, you, it's not surprising, uh, the, the meme, I've seen a bunch of like, you know, the Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz, like being like, I need oil, oh my gosh, it's like, hey, it's better to be addicted to that kind of, you know, or overuse cannabis than it is to overuse alcohol at this point. And my fiance is all about like, the vibes are changing, like that shit won't even work. I can't imagine going on a cruise ship or something and just be like a Mardi Gras situation at this point. I mean, I drank last year at times when I was doing a similar thing at a coffee shop, just grinding it out. Um. And it wasn't that fun. It was kind of like a nostalgic thing. I'm not, if people want to drink, you know, Stein's cheered, uh, have fun. But at some level, like there's higher levels and not to make it better or something like that. It's not a competition, but there's like, it's vibrational things. I think you understand what I'm saying. It's like alcohol, McDonald's, that's pretty low vibration shit. Like yeah. uh, LSD, you know, ayahuasca, it seems like those are higher level things. Yeah, if I may, um, I, I mean, I agree, of course. Um, I had the lucky whatever you chose not to be an alcoholic Raphael. Come yeah <laughs> in, a, in, in a sense and and then you know after puking three times from really trying just to see if alcohol gets me anywhere i was like oh there's this other thing you know like this herb stuff you know let's see what that does and you know from that moment on and there's other you know like simple even very somewhat legal stuff like kratom and so on depending on where you are which uh, to me you know can in a sense you can't really compare it uh, but no. <laughs> it can give you it can give you different effects that can also you know give you a relaxing even external stimulant and so on which can be nice yeah but simply isn't you know deteriorating your liver in the same extent if you don't overuse it of course and just so i don't forget the point since we talk about type 1 uh, diabetes and ayurveda um are you familiar with um, this would be the one book if any that i would recommend everyone to read who's interested in a holistic health perspective and this book is called of course, I don't know the name now, but it's written by Dr. Gabriel Cousins. And the book is called either The Rainbow Diet, but there is like one particular tome. I'll look it up in a second. Um, and there he's describing basically a complete rundown, not only of a raw vegan diet and how it can be you know, adopted and why it's beneficial, but also goes through all the different elements, even chemically, and describes them in almost like a, you know, psychological astrological attribution sense or metaphysical you know uh, new medicine type correlation and the main thing he did or one of the main things he ran tree of life which is like a retreat resource center and also made a documentary quite a few years back called uh, simply raw uh, reversing diabetes in 30 days and basically what you can see there is the journey of pretty random people that just get placed there in the wilderness at this resource center. So, you know, heavy stress reduction, right? They get this perfect raw vegan diet from the raw vegan chef. And basically those who didn't quit were able to forego all their medication they took and also basically managed to completely get off insulin, uh, which I guess you're not using anyhow. This would be another thing I'm curious about how you're dealing with this. And if you're familiar of that, and well, yeah. in the end, it would point towards the same thing you said, just to reconfirm, which is detoxification, because that's what all the raw vegan diet, you know, is doing and increasing electric, you know, capacity. Thank you. <laughs> 
I think I, I think I saw um, Gabriel Cousins. Um, the name sounds familiar. I think he might have been on on one of the Alpha Vedic podcasts um, talking about the Essenes, maybe. Um, but no, I'm not familiar. Um, not familiar yes. with that. It's, it's actually it's actually interesting. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I live. Uh, so so um, I live on a 22 acre homestead, and um, the the wet eating change that I made that was just uh, that was that was um, that was incredible was um, I I basically like a nose to tail carnivore diet um for for some time um you know really high really high quality grass-fed meats um you know um liver organs fixing deficiencies and you know not and and ingesting you know the the feedlot poison you know the feedlot poisonous meat so um that that made a drastic a drastic improvement um and i mean i'm not i'm not married to it we so we um my my freeman moved in here last year and um she uh i i wasn't really gonna I really didn't have the knowledge, or I guess that really the the desire at the, at that point, because I was in some, I was I was focusing on the animals more so than the than you know the permaculture farm and and, and our gardens. But she moved here, and we've got um, so we we had, we started getting squash last year. So I'm working I'm working you know um, working stuff back in, um, but uh, but really, um, yeah, I it's uh, um, yeah I, I I'm definitely curious. I'm definitely curious. Um, that's that's so an interesting interesting. Just angle. To- I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm open open to anything. Yeah. Yes, just to pull up the reference, so it's called uh, Simply Raw, Reversing Diabetes mm-hmm. in 30 Days, a documentary, and the book, I looked it up now, is called, of course, Spiritual Nutrition. You know, how simple could it be? And to me, just to very briefly explain, I had about two-year journey of, you know, switching diets, trying different things, um, you know, even dying, uh, trying fruitarian for a day, which was too much mm-hmm. sugar for me or whatever. <laughs> um, and then I found this book and I was like, oh, great. I tried to look for guys for two years. The first one I had found was some kind of naturopath because I was I was saying, okay, whom to even trust, you know? How would I know if everyone says something different? How would I know if what you're claiming is actually accurate? And at least this guy was over 90 years and he was eating, I think, a vegetarian diet with eggs, but, you know, much, lots of plants, food and so on. And I was like, okay, at least you got mm-hmm. to over 90, you must be doing something, right? And then also there is this great book called that doctors don't lie um which is i forgot by whom but it's basically about minerals and i believe it also includes this experiment with i think a chicken heart cell in a cell in a cell culture and uh, the culture is replaced every day and basically the cell lived forever until someone forgot to replace it so again coming back to the idea of you know germ theory is a scam and infection it's all about the milieu the mm-hmm. terrain and if that is proper just like for your human body you know the air the frequency the mm-hmm. even media thoughts you know um, food uh, touch so on is appropriate then the body will thrive with within that environment you know um so yeah definitely recommend it to check it out and let me know what happens on your journey because in my my very simple mind and i don't have it myself so it's easy for me to say but it would be that this is perfectly curable exactly by the journey actually you already you know are on so yeah yeah. i was gonna say they don't feel i mean i'm a vegan i never proselytize i saw a pita video i mean i was a vegetarian for a long time this stuff makes more sense spiritually for me but i don't think less of people who are like jordan peterson or yourself heavy carnivores I think in some weird way, um, it's a lot like the astrology thing in a sense. It's like, we need training wheels until we know how to ride our own bike. And in some way, we've asked to forget how to ride a bike, so we're relearning it. So it's this kind of weird balancing act between um, looking for authorities outside of yourself to trust, which is valid and part of learning and nature. You're not just in a white room with no stimuli. I mean, we're learning through our culture, which is our petri dish. We're learning through language, which neurologically structures our perception and the filtering there you know diets of certain countries um are very old you know people in uh, eastern asia or whatever are rice heavy whereas people in maybe you know america now are more wheat heavy or whatever so um i guess the Mm -hmm. reason i'm saying all this kind of rambling um is people need to both uh follow their intuition i mean you can ask there's no reason not to ask people for advice but never run to one thing as like the solution. And so this is where it gets tricky because people have different blood types, different metabolism rates. I don't think it's a one size fits all. In some ways, some people might get very anemic being vegan. I've wondered um, if I should be eating, you know, fish or something at times. I, I think I'm doing okay. But uh, I guess what I'm getting at is um, it's kind of like, 
I don't know, a playground, you need to try and see what your your, your skill set or your skill set. It, it's like, what are you naturally going to be oriented towards? And it's Some all about making the experience yourself, you know, just basically trying yeah. out things and then really sensing your energy level, especially once you have some body intuition and feeling, then you, at least that's what I did. You try out different ways and you just realize what resonates most. And then what I'm doing, I'm not strictly raw vegan at mm -hmm. all. But I basically know, you know, how much or how much rather not to eat, what to rather eat, what to rather avoid, you know, you somehow stick to that lots of pure, clean, you know, uh, water and, uh, you know, <laughs> that's it. We don't have to dwell on this now or give, you know, any you know great I recommendations, mean, but it's a journey for sure. Things. Like, like Rafa, I did fruitarianism or whatever for like a week or two when I worked at a YMCA, when I first moved to Colorado, I was working at this YMCA, uh, uh, vacation center basically and um so there's all i could eat bananas all i could eat kiwi all, you know so i was like shit i might as well try it um i'm kind of what we haven't said is like committing to something it's funny because in, in our culture we're so easily distracted and pretty self-oriented so if it doesn't we'll be like oh i don't vibe with that it's like some things take a hot minute to get i mean if luke skywalker had been like i don't like yoda's training That's also true, here, yeah. uh commitment really matters so there's this kind of middle path between like libertarian kind of anarchistic free will like yeah. they're gonna do whatever they want versus like hey these people have been doing this for thousands of years and it seems to work so that you see what i'm saying it's like play with and, the models that work and then find your way within those models if you use them at all and also and i'm not doing this to teach you in particular just to mention it because it's relevant to anyone who hasn't consciously done this yet is i us. really <laughs> think it also yeah yeah i think it also just takes some time for the body to adopt you know because it is a milieu it has different bacteria yeah. all kinds of things these changes take some time and then one gets accustomed mm -hmm. to a different energy level because for example and again, if you want to switch topic, we can just move on, but it's kind of interesting. Um, what I certainly noticed is there is a great difference in the emotional feeling actually, and just the example of eating a lot less, you have a lot less substance in your body. I don't want to say other people don't call it substance, mm -hmm. you know, but it it is it's true to call it less. to call yeah. it that, which means, at least in my mind, then <laughs> my mind, this one mind, there is more capacity and bandwidth. I like that term which you mentioned, you know, by making these changes, and then you just realize, okay, how much bandwidth do I really want? There may even be a limitation on that, that you know, you don't want to go too far ahead sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. There's even spiritual concepts about this. And then also mm -hmm. what type of frequency or coloration do I want? And this is something one can also tune oneself to somewhat by, for example, diet, also media diet and so on, but of course also, you know, nutrition. Um, yeah. I'll so, say this and I'll shut the fuck up. But you were just saying, um, uh, we were talking about commitment. The only reason I became vegan, really two reasons. I saw a PETA video on LSD and I was like, holy shit, like the way that, like, so the way you're doing your meat on this homestead, which I want to kind of talk to you about, um, fascinating, you're doing the thing, shit. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to have a better karma or energy about it versus, you know, things in squalor and freaking out and like, never seen the light of day or whatever so one that was one factor for my veganism conversion mm -hmm. the other one was actually pot withdrawal like i would you know i'd be a, like i get it dude i'd be like I, if i'm not smoking i'm not happy kind of mode um and then at some point i just like stopped for whatever reason i ran out of money or i decided to owe oh, enough is enough and because i was going with, through withdrawal this has happened a few times i just didn't eat for like a week my hypothalamus was all shot and you know it's like my sleeping and eating is all messed up I, I don't know how right. converting to veganism or vegetarianism from a, like a normal lifestyle would be. It feels like I, I had the carpet pulled out from underneath me and then I was like, oh, I find myself here now and that's okay. Um, so anyway, all that being said, I'm not trying to proselytize any diet. I, it seems like you're being conscious. That's the whole point. Be conscious of what you do. Um, if you're going to go to McDonald's, no way. Yeah, and, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. And, and, and I think, um, like I, and I don't have like dogmatic, like I, I'm all about results and I'm all about, um, and I'm all about, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm always taking in information and, and, you know, reanalyzing my conclusions, but, um, and, and, and then my actions ba based off those, but, um, <clears throat> like it's totally possible. Like I, I, the, the reason that I, I chose the, the carnivore diet way was I, I was in Acapulco, um, and, uh, um, a couple, a couple of my, a uh, couple of my friends, John Lilly, um, they were, they started a carnivore diet and she had chronic, she had chronic, you know, um, you know, chronic sickness issues and. Uh oh, we may have. Yes. Lost. Um, See, uh, you know, Jordan he got ripped a full... that working okay, out got you. and oh, he got okay. energy to work uh, out, just... which he didn't have before from, you know, the dietary change. 
you're good. We mm -hmm. just cut out for a long, long time and it froze. And I think we, so you were talking about, uh, I don't think it was John Lilly, the acid yeah, dolphin up? researcher, but uh, John and Lilly, possibly the people in Acapulco, um, were doing a carnivore thing and they were getting healed. Start there. That's mm -hmm. pretty much where we lost the feed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that they were doing the the, the carnivore diet. Um, she had chron she had you know some chronic health issues she was dealing with, and they were she she you know felt a hundred times better. Um, you know eating eating only meat, and it was Mexico, so it wasn't it wasn't like terrible meat like you'll find in the grocery stores here, generally speaking. Um, so like I, I saw um, and he he, he trans transformed, not with no no working out, but he got ripped. And I was like, well, well, shit, like. Um, well, I didn't, I didn't, op I didn't immediately in it, but I got back here to the homestead and, and, um, and so it was, it was that, that, that was what I was familiar with. That's the last one I saw. If I saw a transformation on a vegetarian diet, maybe that would have been the route that I went. And then there was also, so um, just, uh, um, and then, uh, oh my gosh, I don't know. I guess the, the other, the other factor, um, yeah, I guess I don't remember the, the the other lost my train of thought, but um, oh, actually no no no. no. So so I, so I I I don't even think it was necessarily the the nose to tail uh, or like the carnivore diet per se. I think it was just the fact that like I felt like I I I mean I'd been um, you know programmed to like the the self pity and and uh, you know not being not being you know able to do things, not having you know trust in myself to be able to do things. So when I made that lifestyle change, regardless of what it was, it could have been anything at all, but just making a change and sticking to, like making a change and sticking to it for any length of time. Um, and then, you know, seeing a benefit, seeing, you know, seeing a, a drastic result from it. So like, that was like the, the catalyst for a lot of the stuff that, um, you know, that I'm doing now, like being able to maintain like, a, um, I mean, it's been, it's been like, I guess at this point, like three or three or four years of like a steady, like focus of like every day, like consciously seeking out like solutions, um, you know, um, you know, to, you know, to help myself, you know, grow, you know, spiritually and, um, you know, health wise and, and also like, so, so that's, that, that was a major thing too. It could have been, I think it could have been anything. It was just like the, the factors that, that, that set you know, the factors, you know, transpired, um, in my path per se. I'm just so looking could at have your been, tropical chart. Um, but, but I, I do. Yeah. Good. Uh, your North sure. node is conjunct your moon, basically five degree orb, um, and Pluto and Uranus. I mean, not, not Pluto, Uranus and, uh, Neptune. You have, um, a lot of energy in Capricorn fifth house so leo you're here to be a leader dude you're you're a pioneer i mean never doubt it like you i like that you're humble and it's good that you've been humbled and that's a what makes a great leader in a lot of ways i mean you know nobody wants a joffrey leading them it's like fuck you you don't even know what you're talking about man but like jamie lannister he knows he's kind of a different kind of path i'm not saying that's exactly your path but um just looking at this it's like dude <laughs> you're here to you're here to be authentic and that was a big thing for you, but like, you're here to really change the world from your heart. That's your, and what emotionally vibrates with you. It does not matter in a level if it's coming from a mother or the ground in some weird way for you, you'll, you'll figure out what you need to do. Um, but just looking at your chart, it's like this, I mean, tell us how you got into homesteading. I mean, that's a big deal. 22 acres is not like nothing. Yeah. So, um, basically I, uh, I, I left, Ac I, um, was coming back from Acapulco, um, for, for the holidays, I guess it would have been tw uh, 2018 for, for Christmas. And I was going to go back. Um, but, uh, so I came back, I came back, uh, um, I went back and stayed with my parents in Des Moines for a little while. And then I went back to, I flew back to Texas where I was tent camping for a little while. Um, Austin, Texas, North of Austin. And, uh, I, uh, was doing it for a few weeks. I was actually going to get out to go. I actually had a temporary you know, job at a ski resort lined up in Colorado, um, I was going to go work out there cause I wanted to, like, I, I knew, like I knew Which cannabis resort? was, a, was like some part in my path. I was, so I was like, I'm going to go to a place where it's legal and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try that. Like, I feel like there's a, there's a, I feel like there's, um, you know, assistance there for, for what I, for what I, for what I need. Um, up going to Colorado, it, was, it wasn't really, it was on, it was a federal ski resort. So like the, it's still legal there regardless. So I was like, well, that's kind of yeah. pointless. Like I, so I, I, it wasn't really like, I don't know. I wasn't really that set on it, but I had it lined up. Um, and, uh, I, I did the tent camping for a couple of few weeks in, in Austin and I eventually was, I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to, um, going to go back to, to, to Southern Illinois. Um, so yeah, my, my parents have, or my dad bought land out here, um, um, pretty much pretty, pretty close to where I am, um, back in the mid eighties. And, uh, this property came up for sale five or six years ago and, um, they, they got it. Uh, because if if they didn't if, if they didn't purchase it and someone would have come in um, you know a foreigner would have come in and, and bought so like for example um, you've heard of Warren Buffett obviously well Howard Buffett his son owns land uh, you know like forty five minutes he he like half half hour down the road he's got he's got a farm 
he's also the sheriff of a town an hour north too but um regardless it would have been someone like him to come up and bought the property and plus they thought that i might want to that i might want to move out here at some point so i i got back from austin and uh um you know lived here for for about a year and uh didn't really do i tried chickens a couple of times but it's it's pretty vicious out here they they all got i mean i tried to do the free range thing but um they they flew away that didn't work um and uh, then the, the second try, um, I had them, you know, I had a, a run out there, like a, a run out um, for them to go out into in a big ass, uh, big ass chicken coop that was already here on the property. Um, but uh, they, they still they still got killed. It was crazy. So now I've got the birds right up here. The bird shanty is right outside the front front window here. But uh, um, but yeah, I tried, tried the chickens a couple of times and then 2020 happened. And, you know, I, I was eating mostly meat and I was succumbing to the fear mongering. Um, and, uh, you know, like the meat shortages and I was like, oh my gosh. So like the first thing I did was I went, I got a couple of goats and a couple of lambs. Um, yeah. so, uh, that was that, like, that was the start, um, essentially was, um, I, I kind of, you know, reacted and it was a good reaction. I'm happy I did it. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I got, I got some goats and lambs initially and, uh, um, then yeah, birds, uh, I think I did birds that year, but anyway, um, that was, uh, yeah, that was the start of it, um, essentially. And then um, not much longer um, after that, I decided I was going to have an event here at the property, try to get some, um, a big part of my path, which I, I guess I really did mention was Freedom Festivals. Um, there's a, a festival called uh, Midwest Peace Liberty Fest in Michigan. I've been going to since 2015, every single year. Um, and there's a bunch of other ones too. There's uh, Anarchon in Virginia. There's Pork Fest um, in uh, New Hampshire. There's um, they're all over the place. There's a lot of them each year, but I, I would go to those quite, um, you know, quite a bit. And I built up this network of, you know, like quite a few people, um, that's, you know, like I know and trust and, and you know, built up, you know, relationships, relationships with, I just, I was going to try to have an event here on the property called Bonnie Fest. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, you know, organized it entirely privately. It was, everyone had to be vetted. It was a private event, but I ended up getting like 30 people out here the first year. That's what's up. And the other thing that kind of developed that, that developed alongside that is I, I scheduled the event and I came across and, and uh, you know, the old libertarian, um, you know, text that I was looking into a couple of years ago. There's this guy named Erwin Strauss, <clears throat> excuse me, who uh, wrote a book called How to Start Your Own Country. And uh, he uh, one of the uh, one of the solutions in there is start a model country. And it's kind of a joke. Um, and this relates to I wanted like uh, I was listening to the first pop year for guys first podcast where you were talking a lot, Jim, and you mentioned like humor being a major tool. Um, well, he, one of his, um, one of his, uh, thing like this. So the model country is like, it's, it's, it's like a model train set. It's got all the trappings, but it's just in miniature. So like you can issue passports, you can, you know, mint stamps, you can, you know, have coins, you can do, um, like you, you can, you can make it as like, like as legit or as like <laughs> jokingly as you want to. Um, so, so I, so I, I was like, well, you know, I'm like, I'm going to declare, like, I don't want to be a part of the USSA anymore. Um, I'm just going to declare my my homestead to be an independent country. So um, it's a free republic of Pasnia. And the only, the thing that's unique about it though, is the, the idea is that it's the first free country in existence right now, but it's geographically independent. So um, this is Veritas Pasnia. This is, we're an hour and a half Northeast of St. Louis. And we've got, uh, there's Roos Pasnia that's in New York. Um, there's a Pasnia in Michigan. Um, there's some folks over in Europe, uh, I think Germany somewhere that that's, uh, I, I saw him post about it in the for in a, in a forum somewhere. I'll link back on the site. Um, and then um, there's uh, yeah there's 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 some there's they're popping up. Um, I think there's one uh, one in uh, uh, like a suburb northwest Denver too. I don't remember what town what uh, what what uh, suburb it is, but um, they um, you know have a lot of you know freedom freedom gatherings and I think they had like a uh, was it uh, like a breathing ceremony there a couple months ago. But uh, it's uh, there's 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 a lot of them popping up. So the, so yeah that's the idea is the free republic of Pasnia. It's the first free country and uh, Pasnia. Um, the name is uh, so P A Z is uh, is the acronym for permanent autonomous zones. So these are areas mm -hmm. where we can be free, where we can um, you know express our autonomy. Um, they're co coercion free zones. is another way to put it. That's why it's vetted for anyone to come here to Veritas. Um, they've had to already force sworn the use of coercion. And you can kind of see in the in the picture in the video behind me. There's the Constitution on the on the glass. The first event at uh, Vani Fest One. Yeah, the, what what I call the rebirth of uh, freedom ceremony. And so uh, it was, you know, it was, it's kind of a sigil magic is the way I look, the way that I look at it. We have a seal and everything. Um, we're trying to cancel, uh, cancel a lot of this shit. Um, I, didn't, I didn't plan that, but I look back on it now and it's like, that yeah, was well, sigil magic. Um, in, a, in, a, in a sense, at least. Um, so we did a, a constitutional signing. I did a speech. Um, the entire thing on video on Odyssey. Um, 
And that's uh, what I was going to say earlier um, about your chart. So, it's like you're a founding father type energy. I mean, I'm not to blow your head or <laughs> it's like, bro, like you could be a George Washington and no one's going to say no. You just got to keep it in check. You know, like he retired his presidency at one point. If you've seen Hamilton or whatever, you get the idea. Um, it, it, great power comes great responsibility. And in a weird way, you're faking it till you make it. It's not. I mean, in the Bible, I don't know if you're into Christian kind of thinking at all, because I know Bill Cooper essentially kind of was. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you can be trusted with very small things, you can do great, great things. If you can't do shit with little things, like, you don't get the big things. Like, it's just, it doesn't work that way. And mm -hmm. rightly so. I think the universe should not give Joffrey kingdoms or whatever. I always allude to culture. Sorry, people haven't seen Game of Thrones. It's okay. But, uh Anyway, um, no, this is dope. So Pasnia is for a, a personal autonomous zone. Is that what you're saying? Per permanent autonomous. Permanent. Zones. Um, permanent. Yep, they're they're permanent. Or there's there's also there's also temporary autonomous zones too. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's the that's that's the idea. I mean, it's uh, first free country, but like the the legitimate idea um, behind the humor behind the culture jam is is what I call it. Um, cause like, uh, cause I'm, I'm the second I'm coordinator. I'm also like, uh, I, I make up a bunch of other titles too. Like I'm the lead sheep herder. I'm uh, the lead astronaut at the Pasadena secret space program. Yes. Um, I, I'm the, I'm a goldsmith at the Pasadena Bitcoin mines. Um, so like we make up our, like we just make up titles and it's, it's all big, That's it's all, all big anyway. but underneath it all, yeah. um, underneath it, it all like it's the the idea is like a like a, it's called a second round network or a parallel you don't network so you want to be able to provide all around food self-sufficient homesteads like this around um so uh, so yeah food um we've got a passing department of health and wellness so we've got a rife machine incoming um here soon we've got uh one of george wiseman's aqua cure machines uh coming in in a couple months so like Yo, we're, we're, we're looking into thing. like i mean everything what 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 do you need from the what need from the servile society well we're going to duplicate that um, on a foundation of peace and, and voluntarism and truth, not um, you know nonsense that you find in the servile society. I call it. So yeah, um, so yeah, it's uh, we're 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 rebuilding we're rebuilding it from the ground up. We're rebuilding from the ground up, and the other Gross. aspect of it. So I mentioned it's it's vetted. Security culture is um, a big part of it because um, you've got to keep coercers out. If you if coercers come in, they cause problems, and they can call people who can cause more problems. So. Well, that gets um, some you know, you got to have coercion. You've got to be, you've got to be vetted. Yeah. So, okay. So first of all, I have a constant, I like mm -hmm. everywhere I go with my electric guitar, I've been to, you know, Ecuador and Australia. I'm about to go to Costa Rica. I'm a guitarist. I don't know if you knew that, but anyway, I have a constitution in my guitar case. Cause I'm like, if shit really hits the fan, this is not a bad blueprint. It really isn't a bad blueprint. It's just, it's been co-opted by corporations and special interests and all sorts of crazy stuff so um but it is what it is in some way we have to pull back and just be like this is the gestation of a large animal and it's it can be weird and maybe it has birth defects but at least you know it's happening i guess um a couple questions and Raphael might have a few but uh, and yeah chief up cheers to that i can't smoke i can smoke i don't smoke anymore but uh <laughs> all more power to you um what how would i put this what are some um how do you interact with like legal entities? Do they just think it's like a Boy Scout camp and you're doing your own thing? Or are they like, oh, this is a real thing we have to respect? Mm -hmm. Like, how does that work? <laughs> so essentially, um, like I mentioned, you know, security privacy, like I'm not going to write to the F in United Nations and try to get like recognition. Um, that's not going to happen. Like, I, I don't want them to know that we exist. But um, to I, I, so so basically, like the first question that comes up is, well, like, um, you know, like what's the like the pro the property situation? Well, so in second in second realm strategy, um, there's something called the proxy merchant. They're individuals who uh, handle interactions with um, with the coercers. So um, the land is in, is not in my name. Um, the my mailing address is half hour away from here at my my not real day job is what I call it. Uh, so like my name is not associated with this address um, legally speaking at all. So like um, so that's 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 kind of the uh, so they, they don't know we exist. I mean, we we like we have passports um, that we that's you know we uh, you know we um, you know make. They're, they're kind of jokes, but they look really really good. Um, they look really authentic. So like uh, one of some someone actually used it to purchase beer at a gas station. We haven't. Uh, I don't think anyone's tried to use it across the border yet. But um, Might be a I mean, they look that. legitimate. And and I've got. I'm, it's it's interesting too, though. Like I don't I don't I'm not I'm not closing off any possibilities because I, I mentioned you know Acapulco. Well, one of my um, I mean, my one of my buddies there has a connection um, um, 
has connections with like uh you know like like i guess their lawyer has connections with like immigration there so like it's not outside it's not impossible i'm not saying it's likely um it's unlikely but it is possible like that we could get like passing a passport like make it like legally accepted like at the mexican border Order, which would, which would lend quite a bit of credibility um and would be an interesting i don't know it'd, it'd create interesting possibilities but um anyway as far as the legal situation there's not really there's not really an interaction it's just kind of um yeah they don't i don't think they know we exist yet and that's and that's good but i'm not like uh i'm not closing off possibilities per se i think i've heard about like the republic of the conch or something like that some people down in florida at one point kind of did this thing where they're like yo we're seceding mm -hmm. and it turned into like I don't even think they did it for very long because they're like, we don't want like an embargo or military coming in and trying to impose shit. That's why I was kind of wondering like how you're dealing. It seems almost a, uh, um, how would I put mm -hmm. it? There's a, uh, there, oh, what is it called? Oh, but they're like the tenant of, it's not a faith, but it's like, um, it's not absurd. And it, uh, it's like Bob and the guy with the pipe smoking it. Um, is this, what is this called? I forgot now. It's like a thought experiment from like the 70s and 80s where it's like very like almost absurdist stuff and it sounds like you're coming from that angle a little more almost like this is a joke but it could work um kind of thing more which i'm not no, against it's, it's, at all it, yeah. it's 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 the joke and it's and it's serious it's a joke and it's serious so like um like the decent like so the, the the parallel network is a decentralized parallel network so that that's the the other aspect too is i mean this thing is is worldwide um so like mm -hmm. um you know like just like you can't you have to shut down every single bitcoin node or every single laptop that's connected to the network to, to stop the network you would have to like it's a de if it's a decentralized network of second realms then um i mean that falls under you know numerous d numerous different jurisdictions um it's like uh um i guess that that's that's another angle too is um you know that's that that's that idea is it's it's decentralized and um another another element of it too obviously if, if we're going to have uh you know this decentralized um network then uh and we we want to have our own infrastructure and such well there's the department of transportation too and i mentioned vanu well I've, there's a lot of van nomads now um and they do a lot of traveling there's some that 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 you know do deliveries for jobs so eventually i mean it's not there yet we don't have the numbers at this point but um event like we're, we're hoping to have our own like the deli you know like delivery and logistics network too so like this is it's a real thing under a complete joke. like if you look at the yeah if you, if you look at the website it looks like a joke um and that's i guess that's kind of the purpose of it too like even people who are interested like they've got to look a little deeper they've got to spend time um so to, like understand that it's it's kind of a legitimate thing so well, and, reminds me a little, oh, go ahead, Rafael. just um another angle on this so first i like the idea of proxy merchant <laughs> um and in practicality so what is possible at least in austria i'm not sure if there is any similar suitable form in the us in austria you can actually form something that's called associations so i guess over there you would call it 501c3s or something but the special thing in austria is that because of the legality and this is even different than germany it's basically on the same level as other let's say quite fundamental layers of the law fair structure so these vehicles can even be used in a way um to you know still have a recognition or a shell or a interface point with the structure but actually create a lot of what you're talking about freedom mm -hmm. and autonomy within the structure and allow those to interconnect with each other uh, and what's certainly true is that the idea you are having many are and that's why many i guess have joined in one way or another and many many more have in still yet independent and not yet informed of each other projects but this interconnectivity will only increase also by this conversation mm -hmm. and um, it is quite obvious to me that i even want to say in some senses you know we have the numbers and even like you said in the beginning which is quite a spiritual perspective you know we've already won it's just a matter of realizing it in a sense i very much agree and this can be now you know the most joyous and amazing time when we actually maybe for the first time in a much too long time certainly could have a let's say coercion free society you know let's just start there <laughs> yeah so so i guess an, another couple of things that come to mind um so we have like it's uh, so it's basically like a cooperative too so we have what we call stakeholders s-t-a-k holder um so people can um they you know there's you know the website people can be, look at what it's what what it takes to become or look at what perks there are becoming a stakeholders is the way i want to put it 
and uh um so that's one that's one thing too like we'll we'll, we'll at some point sell raw milk we we sell raw eggs um and the way that we get around like you know, like the um selling like you have to be licensed to sell raw dairy um but the way that we go around that is we don't serve the general public we don't want to i don't want like the reason why i'm, he I'm out here is because i don't want to associate with the general public so um we don't deal with the public and therefore we can we can sell to people within our cooperative and the other the other angle is private membership um organizations um like apparently they, they were a thing around pro Prohibition, where um, if you were a pub bar, you couldn't sell you couldn't sell liquor. But if you were a private organization, then they could sell they could they could sell they could sell you beer. So that's, um, it seems to be yeah, it seems to be a legitimate thing. I haven't gone that far with it. Um, yes, yeah. that's in a sense the way to go, and also important to recognize. Uh, even because in my ideal world, we don't need any of these papers. We won't even need Bitcoin or anything, you know. But these are all you know tools and paths that can lead us to the creativity and also to the realization eventually of the inherent and de facto physical abundance if we don't you know mismanage everything deliberately and destroy uh, you know the great <laughs> resupply networks and resources that we have um and yeah and the, the thing to know in this or what is interesting on the conspiracy side is that these very structures you would call them you know for example trusts and then there would be you know different variants of associations as secret or not so secret societies but even legally speaking the control structure is using exactly those tools to oppress everyone but they just keep it for themselves you know so they can evade taxes so they can say oh you know close the taxation leak because they already know that within their foundations and in their trickery they can slide you know around it easily but um it very much seems like we're onto it you know and now with individuals like you and you know many others people actually realize that there is no savior coming to do it for them um but even let's say to the degree that any um saving any help you know will arrive is the degree to which you know we help ourselves you know to kind of thump the bible but you know i think it makes sense uh, very practically speaking libertarian kind of a pioneering energy is very american I, people yeah. have done this for all time it's like uh, the the security mm -hmm. and the safety um and the convenience ultimately of organized culture that's the whole point of a, you know it's like hey there's a guy in, you know there's a hermit in the woods who knows how to make tinctures but basically most people through generations have been socialized and bred into thinking that that's you know that kind of anarchistic kind of in, independence is is something i mean there's disadvantages in the terms of convenience so it's like of course you know if you stop using money or something like it gets a little tricky with bartering and all that but at the end of the day i think there's a um a, a need i mean jordan peterson speaks to this he's like what is he trying to basically sell responsibility for you know 50 plus years we've been told by liberal kind of thinking it's like do whatever you want and it's been very soft and it's like rights come with responsibilities so it's like it's one thing to have you know the right to own a gun but it's like it's not i mean i don't really own a gun or shoot guns but it's like it's another thing not to know how to like hit a target and you could shout all day long about oh, i have the right to shoot a gun but it's like unless you're using these rights responsibly it's kind of just chatter or whatever or static on the line so what you're doing even though you feel like it's kind of coming from a humorous kind of like uh whatever kind of parallel monty python energy or whatever not exactly it's authentic but it's like not like i don't know how i put it like um obviously culturally sanctioned or whatever um don't worry i, I would that. almost say sorry just maybe to reframe it it maybe just doesn't have the um assumed monopoly on authority as all the current versions of systems would have maybe that's the yeah. big difference you know because you're not going there and saying you have to respect this and that but you can yeah, and, and really I don't, enjoy it and you see know? i don't i don't call myself i i had to i had to create a title i wasn't calling myself We'll wait for it, Raphael. Yeah. yeah. There he is. Oh, Say okay. that all again. You didn't have yes. a title, but you Sorry, called yourself was, something. Sorry, cut out there for a second. Yeah. This is a hot potato. Can you hear me? NSA doesn't want this shit. Yeah, we could hear you. Just kind of coming in and out for Basically, just parts. repeat the <laughs> part about the title and all else yeah. I can say about the internet is just, you know, maybe it's because it's a cross-border yeah, connection, yeah. you know, maybe that's why. So, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I was just gonna say, like that, like the titles again. Like I, I'm the second realm coordinator. Is all I am. Like I don't, I don't actually like. No, there's no like. Obviously, it's a fake title anyway. But like I wasn't gonna choose, um, choose well, a title with that, that other those other connotations or whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, def definitely not, definitely not. But um, I mean, I you mentioned something 
something something interesting uh interesting there that, like that was that was another recognition too that it, it was a major weight off my you know off my back because you know i i, I i'd get i'd drink a lot of I'd, I'd drink a lot and then i'd watch like those alex jones documentaries back you know back in the day and uh you know it kind of seemed like it was like the end was coming and like there's to be a big fight and a big war and uh um and like it kind of seemed like uh you know like the the end was yeah the, the end was the end was close um but uh i mean like the the spirit like when you when you realize like reincarnation seems to be real at least uh you know from from what i've looked into and like this isn't it um and then you also look at things like uh, i came across um this was another just a random stumbling and i guess maybe it might be like you find what you're looking for i guess in a sense maybe this is one of those examples but um i came across this uh um, this this text called the Son of God, the Mystical Teachings of the Masters, and, and uh, it was by this guy, um, uh, Climber. It was published in 1916, and it was uh, it's got it's real, really auspicious, which is probably what interested me to it, drew, drew me to it. But it's from the Temple of Illuminati um, for the Order of the Illuminati, so it's like a Rosicrucian document. And um, so I was like, what am I getting myself into? So I started looking through it, and it was like like I was reading a libertarian text, um, like they were were talking about it was i guess I, I don't remember this was a little while back i don't remember all the details for it but um it was uh people interested in checking it out it was uh bonniepodcast.com forward slash 94 um it's called ancient second realms and um they were talking they were going through like the history of um they talked about the essenes and that was the first time i'd ever heard about the essenes um but like just one one quick quote from it um, but yeah, the, again, the title is, the title episode is Ancient Second Realms, and this is one quote from there. Quote, the solution which the Essenes offered for economic and social harmony can be applied in every age, the present as well as the past. It contained four factors. Uh, one, separating from the chaotic conditions of the mass of mankind, which refuses to obey natural and cosmic law. End quote. And that's all I have in the, in, in the, uh, in Give it a second. Um, so like, this is like, this might not like this. It's not. It might not even be something that can be like one per se, right? Like it might be, um, like, I don't know. Maybe in this school, there's always going to be. There's. I mean, and that's the Bonnie perspective too. Is that there's always going to be coercers. So, so, I don't know if this is something that can necessarily be solved, um, or that can necessarily be one in that manner. I think, like, um, you know, individually and spiritually speaking, and um, I don't know. Um, but uh, you know yeah, more than you think, kind bro. Of, kind of rambling. You know more than you think. Doing that right no, right. Don't worry. Never fret. I ramble. We'll take the bullet for the team. Um, the idea is like love wins. What's not love? I mean, I'm a, I'm coming from a more Judeo-Christian thing. I call myself a Christian, though. At this point, that's kind of like very relative um, <laughs> compared to most people. And uh, it's like, what's not grace? Like the fact that we're on a planet in the Goldilocks zone, breathing oxygen and able to like communicate through language and comprehend each other in this vast ocean of craziness. Like, it, it's a wild ride, kind of a Bill Hicksian, like, oh my gosh, a lot of ups and downs and thrills and chills. Like, it's not uninteresting. Um, and there could be a whole lot of spectrum of what the polarity of, like, you know, total zero interesting to, like, the most manic uh, novelty possible or whatever, right? Like, I mean, it seems like in a McKenna sense, we're going towards more and more novelty by the day, post-2012. But what you're kind of tapping into, I think, is... I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of thing. And, and it just like in, um, you know, like a tree of bifurcates and stuff, part of the trees of liberty have gotten kind of ossified or, or need to be pruned back or we need to just go back a few steps. It doesn't mean we have to go live in mud dog huts and not speak language or, you know, it's like extreme resetting is kind of like extreme resetting. But um, what you're doing, it sounds like, is at least starting with the idea of like a living RPG almost where you're having fun with it and then seeing what's plausible and possible like I was saying, I'm not an expert of history by any means, but it's like, you know, wilderness men and things like that. Like pioneers have done this for a long time. And we just haven't had, like at some point we stopped colonizing and pioneering in the ge geography of the world to a degree. So that's when we kind of started being like, well, I want, a, I want a refrigerator and I want a Beatles record and I want to go to the moon or, you know, whatever kind of the modern culture did, which is its own values. And it's good for learning through. But I think it seems like you're a little, I mean, I'm 36, you're younger than me. You were born in the early 90s um you're gonna be you're on your saturn return right about now i think you're how are you 29 yeah yeah you're yeah, yeah. you're saturn, this makes total sense you're kick, i mean because you have a capricorn moon i mean you're you're taking care of business and you don't i like that you're kind of nonchalant about it because that's probably the best it's like it, being in a band if you go in there and you're like we have to write stairway to heaven part two or whatever i used to have this kind of mental pressure of like my god if you listen to early prog rock genesis like they had like 
20 minute songs that were just mind numbingly awesome shit. And I was like, I can't even do anything. So starting kind of out of fun and just being, let's just fuck around and see what works. What doesn't, um, that's the spirit with, with what you're imbuing your, um, creation here. And, um, it sounds like you're doing a good thing. If I'm ever in the area, I'm going to come up and kick it or whatever and be like, Hey, yeah, let's like pull out a tree or yeah. let's plant some food or whatever the fuck. Please do. Um, Tell us a little about like you, you were saying the vetting process because I think that's smart. Uh, ironically enough, um, the psychic I've only been to psychics once really, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, you were an Essene in a past life or whatever." So I don't know much about the Essenes, but uh, the idea I think is more libertarian kind of thinking, and that these kind of hermitage fringe thinking groups can work, but it's hard to know how to interface with it. That's when you read animal farmers thing. It's like how you know the horse is doing all the work and all the everyone's afraid of the dogs, the military dogs protecting the pigs. But the pigs don't have like that's why communism can't work really because it is unless you're like totally self-sovereign. Um because you need an interface point for representation militarily or other things. So anyway, I'm rambling, but tell us a little about like what are some of the values you guys do espouse to if you're not going under a major ethos per se. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically the, the vet process is fairly simple. Like we, we keep it, keeping things simple and having fun. Um, so like so people have come in and been like, have you, have you thought about doing like a, a, you know, dispute resolution organization on it? Like a decent, like on a DAO, like on a blockchain, it's like, no, we're just going to vet. Um, it's like, it's, it's less complicated. Um, I don't, yeah. If we, if we, if we got, if we got developers, we're going to need to work on the, on the website, the digital second realm. Um, but it, but anyway, um, yeah. So the vetting process is fairly simple. It's uh, um, so like I said, I've been going to these freedom festivals for like for, for seven years now, um, and uh, you know I'd I'd uh, you know built these relationships, and um, that's they're what I call like the the first the first ring in my circle of trust is these people who I would trust with, I would trust my life right like I, I would trust these people with my life um so then from there um any of them can invite whoever they want to um but um if anything were to go wrong um they were the one that vouched for them um and it would fall back on them so basically like they, it's so we have to know them personally and invite them or we have to um find a find a colleague in common that's um that could vouch for the reputation um and it's not hard to do the inter the community is not really that big um it's funny like they're the people like as one example, someone hit someone hit me up on the LUA, so my the Libertarian type publication site. It wasn't even Bonnie or Pasnia, and uh, he uh, he just just the random like uh, you know like the the shop help messenger app was on there at one point, and uh, he was like, hey, my family's you know on an RV trip. Uh, can we can we stop by? <clears throat> I was like, well, um, you know, like it's it's outside like with our normal par normal parameters, but yeah, go for it. I'm gonna you know with his family, come on out, whatever. We'll, we'll give it a shot. And he happened to like have been like a roommate with someone I used to do radio radio with who I'd been to freedom festivals with for like five years. So like that that just happens. Like we all know each other anyway. So like um, as far as getting vetted, like it's people like I, I've heard people like, well, that seems like a pain. It's like no, it's really not that hard. It's just like we, we got to make sure that um, like you're not just some random that's going to cause trouble. Is essentially you know the deal. And um, there's also too like the like uh, um, like like folk, like folks like you, um, Jim and, and Rafa Raphael. You guys would certainly be welcome out here. I've listened to you guys on podcast enough. I can tell you're authentic. I can um, I can tell you're good people. It's uh, um, it's what I would call like uh, like a lot of people would like when I when I um, when I I can't recall an example, but like it, I kind of consider this realm like beyond anarchy where. Um, like it's beyond, like it's, it's, it's beyond just like, uh, like the, the anti-authoritarian and, um, you know, pro-freedom. It's like, um, going all the way with liberation, right. Mm -hmm. Um, taking it to, taking it to different realms. Um, so, um, you asked about, um, like some, I guess some of the, the values and I'll just, I'll, um, pulling up the page real quick. You got but, a uh, the constitution. Okay. Constitution. No, it's, uh, it's. It's the passing of constitution. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but there's uh, so there's the Declaration of Independence, which I basically ripped off of the. Um, I use the original as the um, as the inspiration template. and just changed some stuff around. But um, the founding hey, principles. Um, yep, a template. <clears throat> it does. Um, so the founding principles of Pasnia are constitution, um, a respect for and commitment to privacy. The use of pseudonyms is encouraged. Uh, don't hurt people and honor your contracts, which is just the base like. Like libertarian or you know proprietarian anarchism explained in like one word one sentence don't hurt people and honor your contracts um third a culture that encourages humanity to flourish rather than degrade and regress uh and a recognition of important task ahead of us to ensure the continuation of freedom into the future another way for those seeking a way out so like um the contract is like it's not like there's nothing like 
it's really basic um but that's mm. that's all it is um that's like uh that's the the, the ethos behind Pasnia is, is uh is that and i guess i'll mention in, in terms of the um so yeah pseudonyms um that's another security culture thing um basically um <clears throat> the i guess the the crypt the, the i guess the crypto anarchist perspective on it is if there's no attribution then there can be no um there can be no i don't know if i want to get into this even necessarily but no, um but it's yeah like are, they're, they're another basically. way they're another way too yeah it's so 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 basically um your given name like shane is attributable to some things and Rayo is attributed to others so it's basically creating multiple identities for different situations um and um yeah, so separating, you know, it's, it's uh, separating and straw man um, yes, is and, another way too. And maybe just to line it out in a certain way, because what comes to mind for me, and I don't even, maybe that's why I don't want to talk about internet it. I'm not sure. Because I'm, I'm sure yeah, yeah, internet hands, of course. I mean, until recently, this was very popular and nobody on the internet knows you're a dog, you know. I'm thinking of even, you know, clandestine operations or whatever, where for other security purposes, this would be used. I just find it so interesting because just like with the vetting process, generally, a maybe also human response, maybe naive response, maybe conditioned response would be, oh, let's be open and invite everybody. But again, exactly this factor, and we can even compare it like with cells or whatever, they need to maintain a certain voltage and certain, you know, uh, certain integrity. environments, yeah, also integ integrity, mm -hmm. yeah, that there is again a controller group that uses this very much because if you're not vetted, you're not going to get tapped at Yale for skull and bones. Ha ha ha, Mason. big joke, yeah. you know, yeah. all of those invite structures. <laughs> but at the same time, it's kind of suggested, and I would what even else? somehow vibe with that, invite everyone. But the issue is just like the Rosicrucians, which may be part of X share, at least for that document, properly state is there is some need for some semi-permeable barrier just because otherwise it gets diluted and you can't build that even if you wanted to ultimately liberate everyone, you need to maintain a certain density of energy within a system that you can actually reach that level. And there it's very important to have the mm -hmm. proper type of you know, discrimination, let me say distinction. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's highly interesting, I think. It's you funny know? because these are the, in, if we want to play devil's advocate for just a brief moment, I would, because I don't run around just thinking everyone's like a satanic pedophile all the time. I mean, let's just be, I think some people are really trying to be states people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I think some people are just buy into the matrix so much that they're not really thinking for themselves. So they're, they're thinking more in terms of like material security or status or power, or what you know, these things. There's probably definitely an evil nefarious elements and probably more than I'm even naively aware of clearly. But um, at the end of the day, it's funny because the the modalities through which governments currently and for the past, let's say, 200 years have been trying things. It's like these are these are essentially valid attempts at trying to control reality and, and govern it. I mean, that's all government. Right. And I think at some point um, it's tricky because how the model would kind of be like. All right, you're going to look to and there's nothing, it's not right or wrong, but there's going to be a stage in your gestation as a, as a soul where you're going to need, um, even Jesus, like before he was like, you know, 12 in the stories or whatever, it's like he went and listened to all the wise people in the temple and shit. He got like bearings basically. And then at some point he kind of went out and did his own thing. And we're just going to use the Christian story for a second because I'm better well equipped with that than the Buddha story particularly, but same idea with the Buddhism. Um, you know, you, you, you got a group, a core group or whatever, and you have certain values. It's open access to a point, but at some level, um, that's the whole Judas thing. It's like if you're open too much, uh, you could get really screwed over like Mufasa was by his brother. I mean, even blood doesn't discriminate against like pride, ego, va you know, vanity, evil, maliciousness, whatever. And to be naive that these things don't exist is like hard. So it's weird because mm -hmm. I guess we're in this weird gestational thing where we're not there yet, but we can do better. So it's almost like the training wheels are coming off and it's like, that's kind of how I've looked at the last like two or three years. It's like, do you want to be told by the media and the state what to do and think and feel and what to put in your body? Or are you going to try to do your own thing? And neither are wrong in a sense. They're both expressions of the one infinite consciousness playing around with itself or whatever Raphael might say more elegantly. Um, but in some weird way, it seems like you're vibrating on a wave where people are like, look, we're not stupid. We're capable, which is something that we don't really talk about much in our culture these days, like just sovereignty and responsibility. You and your circles have for a while, but me, no. I mean, I was just like, I mean, I've even been watching Avatar The Last Airbender, rewatching it, I'm watching uh, Legend of Korra right now, um, and reading Neverending Story and doing all this weird culture shit with my uh, fiance. But, um, 
Aang's a vegan, but that, I mean, a vegetarian, but that doesn't mean everybody needs to be a vegetarian. I guess, God, this is a buckshot talk, but the whole point is we're exactly where we <laughs> need to be and certain nodes are going in certain directions and that's okay. And if, if you want, like, I mean, even in the matrix, Siler was like, man, I missed the, the, um, padded, you know, cushioning of the system so much so that I'm going to revert to it. And I think a lot of us are kind of tired of that. We don't want to give up comfort and stability, but at the same time, we want to do it on our own terms and not being told by like a state or religion or whatever, that this is the absolute only thing or else you'll get put up against the wall or else you go to hell, all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's an interesting time. I mean, in a weird way, it's kind of reflecting in another element when you were talking about, um, you know, not like fluid identity and kind of non-culpability uh and even the fact that you're playing around with this stuff is reminding me a little but not exactly of like kind of these metaverse situations that are starting to pop up where people are wanting to escape but yours feels like a like a, a flesh and bone metaverse if that makes sense like it's not just some digital thing people you know plug in and go sort our, our line on uh or you know rpg on um you're doing it so it's almost like sim city or uh oregon trail but real that's what I'm saying. It's like not new, new. <laughs> it's just new to us. Like our, like the, for, mm. for the past 30 to 50 years, people haven't, you know, the guy who disappeared in the woods with the publications or whatever, he was doing it. But generally speaking, this is pretty fringe stuff. Most people want the security and the, you know, the perks, I guess, of, of society. And there's, there's a price to be paid for all that. I mean, yeah, fast food is quick, but my God, it's not that healthy. And the, you know, the ethics around it aren't that great mm. or whatever. So um, anyway, I'm kind of curious about um, shit. What was one thing I was going to ask a question about? <laughs> it just popped in my head, but I totally spaced. Uh, well, Raphael, do you have any questions? I'm kind well, of. I, 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 only, had a thought. I only have just, one or two random box shots from earlier, but they're really, they're really random. But this just came to me recently, free. just because you mentioned Game of Thrones <laughs> a few times, and because I know you're into Exertus, uh, Rayo. So I had this realization two days ago or something, I was watching some like reloads or old stuff of Game of Thrones or new stuff, there will be some new stuff. And I was like, why people are so fascinated and it's so interesting, it's such a great, it's such a big universe. But then I was like, wow, this is actually the key in the hidden message, because if it is true, which in this case, I can somewhat believe if I look at the guy, that George R. R. Martin actually drew all of this from his imagination, then I can most easily believe that, you know, some I want to call them monks, but whatever controller class, you know, can come up with a completely new history with some templates and copy and paste. If only one individual can come up with an entire universe. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's the reset discussion. But that's something that you know came to my mind recently. <laughs> and that's a rabbit hole I don't tend to go down. I mean, I'm a I'm a pussy these days, really, with a lot of the kind of conspiracy stuff because I'm like it just brings down my vibes. I mean, I don't want to be bypassing, but at the same time, I'm like, hey, I can't just look at you know. Hillary eats babies documentaries or whatever stuff all day. Not that that's what you do, Raphael. But mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, the reset, I'm sure, I'm wondering, Rayo, have you do you have any perspectives or thoughts on that? That's how you know Exertus. So what's your kind of touch point with uh, resets and yeah, Atari, that'd be interesting. Et Especially also in in you know correlation with all the experiences and you know education in a sense you've undergone. <clears throat> so um, it's it's interesting. I um, I guess. Uh, um, the way that I entered that area, um, I think I heard Howdy McCoskey on, um, or actually, no, I was, it was through Matt from Quantum of Conscience mentioned Howdy McCoskey, and I came across his book, uh, Exposing Expositions, and uh, I'd, like, as I'd heard him talk about the World's Fairs, and I remember back in, it was like, uh, was I in elementary school or middle school? Um, we had a World's Fair, um, like it was, a, you know, a mock World's Fair there, so I was like, huh, I haven't thought about that in a little while, um, but uh yeah, as far as uh, I, I really don't have any conclusions. Um, I have uh, I have Emmanuel Velikovsky's Rules in Collision, which uh, he gets into, um, I guess, uh, uh, some of that stuff. And then I, I do plan on going through Fomenko. Um, but like I, I look at a lot of this stuff as like, I mean, it's just gonna be like life's research. Um, so like I, I'll, I'll have, I'll, you know, I might have, uh, you know, I might might get to cert, I might, uh, you know, get some clarity. But um, again, like uh, it's a. Uh, it's it's a massive topic and it's 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 more so I it's more so um, I guess entertainment but at the same time um, I, I do think yeah. it's critically important to know what to know where we you know like where um, you know um, 
you know, like where, where our origins are. I think that's, I think that's important. And, uh, um, you know, you look at, uh, like I, the kind of the, the, the way that I looked at it initially was like, that was, that wasn't that long ago. Like, there's no way that could have, there's no way I could have like, you know, like, could have just slipped through, you know, within you know, two or three generations. But like, I look at what, ha- what's gone, what's transpired over the past couple of years and all the stuff that's been, you know, rewritten and erased. It's like, yeah, in a hundred years, it totally, like, totally. Yeah um and you look back at uh, you know the the prussian schooling system was you know that that came over um you know early 20th century um like the these mind control systems have been here for for you know i guess the, the just the the ones for the 100 years like um there's a yeah i i mean i i totally uh um i mean i i really don't have any conclusions but um, I it's I it's you. definitely interesting and uh Raphael's way um, more convicted of yeah it. And, like, then, and then you tie in things like like michelle gibson too um yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if he's ever. She would be cool. Michelle she Gibson, would be super like, cool to I, get like, on. Yeah. Why? Like, I, I started. I started with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, her and Howdy are like just two. Like, I mean, like, I resonate with both of them, obviously. But they like it's they're they're very. Um, I mean, they're very well researched. Um, so like they like they have cre- like they have they had credibility for like from me from the start. Um, like they weren't just like some. Um, I, not, not that I don't look into that stuff too. It was like the, the rat, like the more, the more out there stuff, the more out there perspectives, but, um, it's a very, it's a very reasoned approach to something that the first realm in the survival society would consider not reasonable at all. So, um, I think they're, yeah, they're, they're very good points. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, it, again, it's the, the more I watch, the more that I read, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> know. That's probably the best starting point, quite frankly, the most humble, Although we can know some things, some things, you know, there's like this whole diagram. It's like things you think you know, things you know and you don't know, and the things you have no clue you don't know about, and all this kind of stuff. There's so many levels. I know my kind of gateway entry drug to kind of the idea of history isn't what I think because I know Raphael and Exertus are way more gung-ho, so to speak, about these things to the point where, you know, Raphael's like, go check out inside of a volcano or whatever to see if it's real kind of thing. Or I want you to clarify your own position on that, Raphael. I don't want to speak for you. But, um... But we've had people on here through Exertus who are like, the pyramids are made of styrofoam. You know, just crazy things. I'm like, what? But for me, um, Joe Rogan would have Graham Hancock, and I think he actually just yeah. had him on again, but I haven't listened to it, Randall Carlson, who's a Freemason. Uh, so it's you got to take it with a grain of salt. But um, he's the coolest Freemason I think I know. I, I mean, it's tricky, but uh, he, he seems legit enough, a nice guy enough, or whatever. And the whole Gobekli Tepe thing, where it's like, this is way older than what we think. It was intentionally buried. It's happening around the uh, younger, driest kind of period, quote unquote, all these kind of dynamics. To me, that mean, I mean, that's pretty much about as solid as into any resetting. It's not even a reset. It's just like, oh, history in our society isn't what we think. We go back to like Babylon, uh, Bill Cooper style. And that's maybe when there was like a black magic twist on things with money and power and weird stuff. Um, yeah. I'm rambling, but anyway, my, yeah, my, I, I, the world's fair stuff is fascinating. Um, I haven't really done much research on this. I've always let Raphael not think for me, but it's like, Hey, I've got like 40 things going on. So if that's your shtick, you jam on that instrument, bro. So, yeah, and I'll hear I mean, what it's your certainly something like. which was uh, extra capacity in a sense, but also you have to understand Vienna, the ring, Vienna, yeah. the ring is full of these buildings, you know? No one can show you proper construction photos. No one is still building like this. They always have these fable stories, even in Austria. I, I guess in over there, you call it the Gilded Age. And in Austria and Germany, you call it, literally call it, like the late 19th century, you literally call that period Gründerzeit, which means founder's period. And I'm like, what the fuck? Who's founding what, you know? supposedly the monarchy just got dismantled mm-hmm. and then they built all these super nice buildings in five years and if you look at old pictures of vienna even the walls they look like a star fort i'm very sorry and i haven't also yet verified the links because the other issue david brought up david ewing jr with whom i've had a few very interesting discussions you mentioning i'm not sure if he ever said pyramids are made of styrofoam but I mean, he, I he basically like that, like, well he's just even showing in his books he's just showing pictures for example of ephesus which is supposedly this very important like cult- cultural yeah. heritage site an ephesus in turkey it's like mm-hmm. somewhere yeah. there and they have all these artifacts there and he's basically just showing you an image 100 years prior where now there's the great monument and 100 years prior there was nothing there you know and it just makes sense that if I create a new society and a new matrix, I'm also creating a new history and just put some props somewhere. And they may even have some validity somehow and some connection. But how would you know, just like you said, if we see how much has been changed in just 10 years, 
how much can be changed in a longer time. But just as to my history, for eight years, I went to a, into a building which basically looks like an Atlantean temple with red pillars and, you know, like this, just the same way your courts look and so on. And even then just understanding all the, all these buildings got turned into insane asylums and states and banks. And a few rich people got the gilded mansions with the fireplaces that are super ornamental with $100,000 paintings and sure you're going to put your firewood in there or what. The thing is just, you know, there's too many discrepancies. And at least in my understanding of history, I don't know how you felt in school or whatever. There were many questions that were left unanswered to me, many links that weren't really connected. And you just get, yeah, three paragraphs about the Egyptians enjoy you know and i'm like <laughs> mm -hmm. you know there's there's an issue there if they put and and also in my case because they never talked about the building for example where we were for eight years they never explained what the fuck this building even is and why it looks so special and why it has to be built why a school has to look like that supposedly built in three years by you know one of the five freemasons or whatever that built all of those buildings according to wikipedia and then i'm like you know free mason free masonry even just with the circumstantial evidence, you know, I'm sorry. So yeah, anyhow. So maybe just that explains why I'm so interested in this because well, I'm around yeah, no, these buildings touches, all the time. Your, yeah, so. it touches your reality more, I mean, more than mine. Uh, and I'm, I'm easily distracted. You're more committed to a thought form, Raphael. I appreciate that. I can be like, oh, that's an interesting thought. Da -da -da -da, and just run off. Um, before uh, we kind of start winding down because I don't want to take up your whole day and I'm being told dinner is ready. Um, I'm curious uh, what... <laughs> Because we're going to have to get you back on. I, I, If you want to talk with Exertus and us sometime and shoot the shit in a group thing, or just do your own thing again and just come on and talk. Uh, we've kind of broken the ice and gotten you in the jacuzzi, so to speak. So you're, you're definitely fun. Team Rabbit Hole. Uh, dude, you're doing the shit. I'm kind of curious. Um, what are some of your plans, hopes, visions? What, what are projects you're working on? I, I want to definitely talk a little more about publication and how that looks because it seems like if enough like minds get together, you get a Library of Alexandria type thing going. But... Um, yeah, tell us kind of what the scope of your, you know, future projects, whatever. This is your kind of moment to spiel whatever you want to spiel. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess uh, I'll just say, um, you know, obviously, like we uh, we definitely prefer the physical, you know, the physical physical space and time. So, um, Jim, if you're ever, yeah, if you're ever in the area, please do come by. But we we do have uh, um, a few official events announced um, for this mm -hmm. year. And, and uh, if if I don't know you, if we've never, you know communicate on digitally, you know, speaking to the audience here. Um, we do have a, a PASNIA um, Committee of Correspondence Telegram chat. And um, you, don't, you, you don't have to have a digital connection. You can just come in there and start talking and building your reputation. And, uh, you know, if I get a good feel about you, I'll, I'll probably send you an invite. So um, it's uh, basically we just, just just do basically a layer of, uh, you know, layer of getting to know them before we, before we do that. So our first event is actually March 31st, April 4th. Um, it's uh, our you know, our spring camping events. Um, the weather's starting to get nice here, so we're we're gonna um, get together for that. <clears throat> um, then uh, yeah, uh, May 26th to May 30th, uh, it's uh, our Volunteerism Day weekend uh, uh, weekend gathering. Um, it's Memorial Day weekend um, is what the official holiday is in the Survival Society, but we call it Volunteerism Day. Volunteerism Day. Um, so yeah, it's May 26th to May 30th, and then Volunteer Fest three is our biggest uh, our biggest main event of the year. Um, hoping to feature some second realm culture have a musician comedian um you know these are um so you, you're talk, talking about culture well um you know a lot of the a lot of the music and, and media out there um is not uh, not for empowerment or education it's it's for uh you know control and and you know mind control and, and brainwashing and predictive programming and all those sorts of things so um in the second realm we have our own culture but it's focused upon um focus upon empowerment and uh you know freedom and things like that um so i'm um, hopefully gonna have uh i'll, I'll mention we, we hope and get elias clay out here last year um she does uh she, i guess she's kind of like a rapper hip-hop but she's got incredible music um really really um I, very, I think you guys would definitely dig it but we were hoping to get get her out, out out here last year she didn't she wasn't able to make it um but something like that would be would be incredible so, yeah that's that's uh um bonnie fest then also just uh self-liberational stuff we'll probably do some more on the garden we'll uh um i know i might put up some fencing something um and uh mushroom hunting um is always on on the docket because um, i got really into that last year um towards the end of the season and uh they're everywhere they're they're everywhere so um paul stevens uh, has a really good yeah, documentary i, I, I just that recommend shows that. people people i mean i know it's servile <laughs> like Netflix yeah so people, culture, people right? want to come out they'd be awesome <laughs> yeah dude you're crushing it i mean we got the strength card and the six of wands you're being a leader 
you're not done yet. Don't give up. Keep pushing that rock uphill with a smile, I guess, or, you know, Sisyphean style. But um, here you've got strength. You've got charisma and you're you just keep experimenting. Have fun. It sounds like you're doing a great thing. Anyway, we can help. Obviously, let us know. Um, and yeah, I'll look into this a little more. Uh, I'm about, to, like I said, to go to Costa Rica with a guy who's kind of doing the same stuff, but not exactly at all. <laughs> but like, it, it'd be good to get people linked up just notally who are, need to be aware of each other. Just so uh, inspiration and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, fraternity. I mean, at the end of the day, these crazy governments, these crazy secret societies have a few tenants that we can use, you know, like I was just thinking the same thing. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. I always wondered, even in this life, I was like, will I have to found a secret society, yeah. you know, and it won't exactly be that and we won't have any of the crazy blood drinking rituals. But to some extent, you know, th th it has some validity, just like you're about to mention now. It's, yeah, it's no, really you know, funny. You can't talk you know? everything yeah. out. Like he was saying, every, every, it... everything I everything I do is a yeah, everything I do is just a mishmash of like is mishmash of a bunch of things. Like we did an episode for like the building the second realm series. Um, we did an episode looking at organized crime because, um, you know, like there's certain operational security things that would definitely translate over. So like, don't like don't you know like yeah, of course they violated person property and that's like terrible. Um, but then again, like you can you can learn from anybody, right? right? Uh, you can that's... learn from anything. So um, yeah, and implement the um, if, and not even just implement like uh, you know the the. Babylon likes to invert. Well, let's invert back. Yeah, rectify. There we go. Let's rectify the paradigm. That's really all it's mm -hmm. about. I mean, that's really what it's about. I think it's hit a tipping point. People like, you know, I mean, people will make their choices, but basically it's like, do you want to be on the Death Star or do you want to go join Ewoks? And it doesn't have to be in the trees, but like the vibes are very different. Uh, there's an imperial kind of like coercive power mania uh, with the Emperor. And so if you're into Star Wars, the whole Senator Palpatine kind of doing his whole thing versus people who are at least willing to say they don't know and they're following their heart luke skywalker at the very least is the fool card just trying to figure it out and i i think we're all just doing this fool card thing and even the six of wands was saying it's like the the rectified fool or whatever it was saying um i think guys we're doing it bit by bit uh we shall remember and we shall rebuild in a sense it's not even about like anti-system mm -hmm. it's about just doing your authentic thing so well that that's when people want to copy you. I mean, America was jamming so hard at one point, people said, let's do democracy. Why not? Uh, it hasn't gone that well because of centralized banks and all sorts of reasons, but um, we can we can rectify it. I really do believe it. So you're giving me a lot of inspiration and hope. I'm really glad that you've heard this stuff before. Well, I'll have to check out your podcast. I want to talk about your publication stuff. We'll get you back on here ASAP. Um, yeah, you're doing the damn thing. So feel proud. I mean, it's not like, you know, don't get cocky, kid. Like it's not over yet, right? But like at the same time, you're doing it so <laughs> fucking know that man you, you're you're doing it and uh that's what's up that's all i gotta say about that cheers appreciate it awesome well then i'd say thank, thank you, you very very, very much you. and uh yeah any if there's any i don't know last words <laughs> just for this transmission and then because of the delay i will say my you know goodbyes now in a sense and when you're done you know we can wave to the audience if we wish and uh up to next time. Sure. I guess uh, um, it was it was awesome talking to you guys. Um, it was. I, I mean, I, I had a feeling it'd be a, a great conversation just from listening to so many of you, listening listening to you guys for so many hours. Um, so yeah, th thanks again for for what you guys are doing, bringing people together. Um, and I guess the last thing I would I would just say is yeah, vonniepodcast.com. Um, there's a lot of different type of material on there. You're posting Bill Cooper stuff, some stuff that related very much so to like the scientific technocracy, which it's more it's more so entertainment now, but just looking back on like all the shit that he was right about, the spot on is, is, is fun. And there's obviously, obviously some, some applicable stuff there too. Um, but uh, most of it is, uh, yeah, very much pertaining to um, self-liberation. We've been getting really into the digital second realm um, as of late, um, crypto anarchy, um, we, uh, um, ghost pads and ghost phones, um, you know, um, hardware, you know, firmware hardened security, uh, you know, pri privacy, pri I guess, uh, um, privacy, uh, phones and laptops and such. So we, we, uh, we've been, we've been expanding. Um, it used to just be, um, used to be books on self liberation, um, over at Liberty Under Attack. And now we've got, uh, ghost pads and ghost phones too. So, um, I've, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, just what I'll, what I'll leave it with. And, uh, um, it's like, I always, I always end emails and podcasts with Fonny was yours for the making and the second realm is yours for the building. So, um, thanks a lot for, uh, for the time tonight, guys. Definitely.
you are most assuredly team rabbit hole, whether you feel like it or not, you're a dolphin. I mean, it's funny because it feels like we're all remembering waking up. Raphael probably feels normal to this, but to me, it's always really surprising. I'm like, oh, this is life isn't that bad. Fucking, I don't need Fox News and CNN to tell me what's going on. Um, it's great meeting up with people that are like minded, like spirited. I mean, different hubs of uh, of the same wheel, if that makes sense, or you know, different spokes of the same wheel. It feels mm -hmm. like we're all kind of figuring our shit out and. And I'm pretty sure, Jim, he even followed your invitation on the Telegram channel, you know? Oh, yeah, I think he was one of those that replied. So that's, you know, I just picked up the lead. So, you know, Good here job. we are, Jim. It's all you're doing. I threw bread to the geeks and wondered if any would quack. And that's, I guess we've had a couple say yes. So I'm totally stoked on it. Yeah, uh, we'll check out your stuff. We'll get you back on. Um, guys, further up and further in. This dream is never ending. Enjoy the fucking ride. Kick ass. Have fun. Cheers. Enjoy, everyone. Thanks. really the issue that we're dealing with with these you know ghost phones ghost pads whatever is that there's no way that you can organize with with other people and have these distributed tribes if you have a snitch in your pocket all the time mm -hmm. people are literally wearing wires all the time they have a snitch in their pocket and they're trying to do clandestine things that's never going to work I'm focused on this project now because I really see how the unfettered flow of communication is what really has prompted this, you know, shift in consciousness. And that if this does, if this can't continue this way and people can't communicate freely with each other, then all the dis distributed networks that have formed um, aren't going to be very effective and they're not going to, uh, they're not going to be able to do what they could do. Um, if you can't communicate, especially when you're basically part of a dispersed tribe at this point, if you can't communicate without being monitored, it basically hamstrings anything, you know, anything going forward. Step up your privacy and order a ghost phone today. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone. And make sure to keep a lookout for more ghost pads, privacy tools, freedom boxes, and more. LibertyUnderAttack.com is the website. Liberty Under Attack Publications. Share your story. Find your freedom. the second volume in the Brushfire thriller series, takes place in the not-so-distant future. In the second half of the 21st century, the War of Ideas took place. The creation of Second Realms and individualist decentralized freedom cells spread across geographical regions, and the practical ideas of liberty, voluntary interaction, and peace took hold. The Free Society in 2048 is loosely based on Samuel E. Konkin III's Phases of Agorism, in which the destruction of the state would be realistically accomplished for the establishment of pockets of free individuals, black and gray markets, and the spreading of the ideas of freedom and liberty, until the demand for an overarching state was no longer perceived as essential, and individualism and voluntary interaction prevailed. The original creators of the freedom cells who led the world to a better place are still scattered about living their lives, including Maxine, the late Henry Tucker's love, and the now washed up but stubborn punk rocker Warren, 
still reside in the Appalachian Mountains. Maxine's nephew, Vince, and his boy Tommy, who had been band nomads ever since Tommy's mom left to pursue a materialistic quest for fortune in the never-ending rat race, went to visit Auntie Max on her homestead on Jim Mountain Road. Although Max is very happy for the visit, she has an ulterior motive. Her close friend she met during her revolutionary days, Isaac Hopper, is trapped in a geographical area previously known as New York City, now known as the State Zone. The State Zone is one of only a handful of remnant states where an overarching power-hungry government rules over its citizens with aggressive force. Together, Warren, Vince, and Tommy team up and use their knowledge, including advanced hacking techniques, low-tech ciphers, IRC encrypted chat, and cryptocurrencies to infiltrate and evade the authorities in the state zone and bring back Isaac to freedom. But their mission, the rescue of Isaac, Auntie Max's close friend and confidant, isn't going to be easy. They are up against a powerful authoritarian Hydra state, a massive surveillance apparatus, a relentless and murderous police state, and a propaganda arm that will not stop until extremist terrorists known as the trio, Warren, Vince, and Tommy, are brought to justice. Will the trio pull off the rescue of Max's longtime friend, Isaac Hopper? Will the forces of good, free individuals, prevail against the safest forces of evil? Find out in the second volume of the Brushfire Thriller series, 2048, available exclusively via Liberty Attack Publications. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048, or snag them both in the Brushfire bundle. libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048 bundle. Libertyunderattack Publications. Share your story. Find your freedom.